are a Monster Hunter uh, fan and you like to play this game, this mod is available on Nexus Mods. Go check it out. Uh, so the, oh, is there any voice audio? Oh, I'm hearing that there's, there's no, okay. I hear, okay, they can hear you, but they can't hear the they game. They can hear me. Oh, now somebody's saying they can hear the game. Game audio is quiet, is what we're seeing. All right, we so you might, okay. you might explain that stuff about the cutscenes to everybody one more time. I'm not sure they All can. Right. So there is an hour and three minutes of uh, cutscenes in this game that is totally by design unskippable that we have created a mod to skip them. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, Nexus Mods is a place that you can actually do that. It's friendly for everyone to use. Uh, there's one part that it doesn't use. We'll talk about it later. Um, I feel really rude. Um, we didn't introduce uh, my commentator, the beautiful and amazing Green Speed. Green, say hi. Hello there. All right. So now that everyone's introduced to Green, it's very important that everyone knows Green, because Green's going to be helping me explain a lot of the stuff that happens in this run. So this is the beginning of the run. This is a gigantic um, volcano mountain turtle. His name is Zora Magdaros. Uh, he wrecked our boat. We want to claim, uh, get an insurance claim, so we're trying to get his information. But he keeps kind of dodging us. Ugh, cutscene skip mod. Everybody, this makes this run so much, so much friendlier in a, in a marathon setting. It's insane. Um, all right, so this is kind of the beginning introduction to the game. This is, you know, teaching us how to uh, move around the game, uh, hide, uh, commit petty theft because we stole this notebook from a te uh, the tent over here. Uh, we will not ever return it to anyone. This is now our notebook forever. Um, but this game was a really cool addition to the Monster Hunter franchise. If you are... Uh, new or uh, not new to this game, you will understand these games to be kind of like built on mobile games uh, or on, on mobile platforms. But this was the first one that came to PC and like big consoles. And honestly, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I This is like one of the reasons why I fell in love with this game is not only was the gameplay loop unapologetically Monster Hunter, but it, it is a pretty game. It is a very pretty game. It's so pretty. Oh, absolutely amazing. Um, so, uh, I want to mention again that there is, um, an incentive open to pick the weapon for the run. I picked out four weapons out of the 14 in the game that I'm comfortable with, with the estimate that I gave. Um, those were switch axe, dual blades, hammer, and great sword. Um, that incentive is still open if you want to try to snipe the, uh, weapon away, uh, from, from sporadic. Uh, cause That's right correct. now dual blades are winning, right? <laughs> I am a dual blades main and I am hype to see dual blades, but I am even more hype to see us raise more funds for Nami. So break my heart and choose a new weapon <laughs> or put more <laughs> donations towards dual blades, you know, make sure it is an absolute certain winner. Make sure it can't lose. That's uh, right. That, that's going to be open for a little bit longer. Um, so if you guys want to get those uh, in still, you you do have time if you want to try to either you know strengthen the lead or lock uh, or or lock in a new one. Um, so all this section here is teaching us a new mechanic that was introduced in this game called stealth. Stealth is more or less ignored. Um, we have to do it there, which I totally hid in that bush and not definitely next to it. Um, but. Uh, stealth won't be really used that much. We will get a piece of equipment called a ghillie mantle. It's a ghillie suit. We get to hide in plain sight. Um, but a lot of this game, we've we've routed the movement around uh, required uh, interactions, required cutscenes, uh, required placement. Um, so right now is is one of these kind of like checkpoints that we have to meet, um, and and we just have to like stand you know right here. And wait for the handler to get here, wait for an audio cue, and then I can start moving again, which is right there. Um, but a lot of this game is, is uh, you know, there, there is weird scripted movement, and we try to break that logic every now and then. Um, but the majority of this game is about gameplay. Um, how you do the fights, how fast you do a fight is, is really going to you know, determine how fast you finish the run. Um, dual blades with the, uh, with the incentive or with the... With the estimate that we have, it's going to be close. It's, it's going to be a close one. Um, there are not many weapons that we have scripted out in this game. It's very few, actually. Uh, Green and I have been putting a lot of work into uh, Switch Axe and Sword and Shield. Um, and then some other people have been putting work into other games uh, or other uh, weapons as well. 
so that's pretty much the tutorial but if you uh, ask anyone else the tutorial ends in actually like uh an hour and 40 minutes <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, speed run of the base game experience, which includes two sections of the game, low rank and high rank. Um, so we will be ending this game in high rank. Uh, and if you are familiar with this game, there was a DLC called Iceborne that takes it to master rank. There is a speed run of that, too. It takes a lot longer, <laughs> uh, closer to, to uh, eight or nine hours. Um, so, yeah, uh, 14 weapons. <laughs> Yeah, just just a I was little bit. Wondering if you're gonna go into Iceborne, so yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't go into the actual Iceborne um, like quest content, but we do play on the Iceborne patch. Um, all the speedruns get done on the most recent patch, um, and so since Iceborne is out, we get to use things like uh, Clutch Claw and Slinger Burst. Um, not to mention, there was a lot of um, you know behind the scenes monster t uh, statistics that were changed. Um, so. You know, we, we get to take advantage of that. Um, this is the first kind of like little movement skip. Uh, these walking animations are kind of forced on us when we're in proximity of an NPC that the game wants us to walk with. We can actually break these in certain areas. Um, this is the first one, which is a, uh, we, we call it Mercer skip. In English, um, this character here, field team leader, is voiced by Matt Mercer. Um, and back then we used to run this game in English. So we called this Mercer skip, uh, but now we don't run the game in English. Uh, Green, do you, you, what, what's the language that we're actually using? Uh, this is the Monster Hunter language. Um, it's essentially poorly translated Japanese, but we like it because it's fast. They finish sentences much quicker than in English. And in actually this council meeting, you'll see why we like that. So you'll see here, not all of this text can be mashed through. That text that you can't mash through is actually linked to the length of the audio file that they're saying. So because Monster Hunter language finishes faster, we get through these council meetings faster and save about 40 seconds over the course of the run. Uh, and Pinnell, that's a great question. Are you just going to use defender weapons and face roll everything? The answer is yes. <laughs> um, so uh, defender weapons uh, are actually category specific. The category that we're running here is Xeno Percent with add-ons. I usually just call it Xeno Percent because it's the most, you know, common and uh, kind of accepted, you know, version of this speed run. Um, but with add-ons refers to some specific gear, um, most notably the defender armor and defender weapons, and then less notably origin armor, fair wind charm, and the early weapon upgrade pack. Those things can be used, but they don't make as big of a difference as just the defender uh, weapon and armors do. So what this does is it takes out all the necessity to grind. Uh, the weapon that won is still dual blades. It is still dual blades. We're doing it. The paired slicers. All right. Or the match slicers, whatever these ones are called. <laughs> the dual blades. Um, so we will be using defender gear. Um, what this did, um, not only did it take an hour off of the run uh, originally, it even took off even more of that, um, but it also made runs um, consistently completable. Pre-Defender Gear, this game is an RNG fest. Uh, we need to get RNG for armor, weapons, um, upgrades. We need RNG on uh, delivery quests and just having the materials to finish the game. You can get to Elder Dragons uh, to the end of this run and not have enough defense to just survive a single hit. And so no matter what, you get hit and you die. Um, so... Defender Gear uh, made this run consistent, uh, which is really nice for Marathon, right? Yeah, we get to show off kind of the cool things, um, which is how fights actually happen because there's still, uh, you know, Defender Gear being as strong as they are still does not remove the element of skill. You know, monster knowledge, weapon knowledge, and combining those two things together to make a fast, successful hunt. You still need those things, even though the Defender Gear is the best gear in the game at this point. Um, so we will, uh, you know, we will be taking advantage of that. Uh, this is the first uh, slaying quest. This is called Joggers of the Ancient Forest. Um, we have to do uh, one thing here and one thing here only, and that's slay seven Joggers. Uh, we're going to take advantage of some monster AI here by slaying two of them outside of this cave. The rest of them, they're going to try to run in. And when they try to do that, they're going to run into this fire. All right, so those guys are done. 
Um, the nice thing too is that Defender Gear is actually really good with dual blades because it has three levels of a skill called Marathon Runner. Um, what that does is that slows down the rate of stamina depleting actions, which includes um, uh, dual blades demon dance uh, or demon mode. Uh, so now we're just hoping for a little bit of an RNG here. Uh, this is like one of two places that RNG is needed. We need an ancient bone. We got it immediately first try and we need a monster bone. That's it. That's all of the RNG. We did it. Nice. <laughs> that was so good. That's perfect. Um, that's like the, the hardest, most reset heavy portion of this run uh, is, is right there. If I don't get that ancient bone, I always like to reset. We can do it without it. Um, but what that Ancient Bone does is it gives us a level of attack boost. It does exactly what it sounds like it does. It gives us more attack. Attack is good, especially for a weapon that hits a lot of times and not very strong. Um, so now we're just gathering a couple of other items here, most notably um, Iron Ore for another uh, upgrade later in the run. Um, and then some things to craft uh, trap tools and make flash bombs. All this stuff we're going to kind of talk about as it comes up. It's a little mind boggling to try to hit it all right now. Um, but that's the, that's the first quest. Um, we haven't made the defender gear yet either. Uh, the defender weapons, we are wearing the armor. A uh, really nice thing about this game is that you can actually just start out with the defender armor. Um, and just a small time optimization that I'm doing here. I've switched my saving type from auto save to manual save. Um, so at the very end of every quest, I'm mashing X until I get to the save option, which I hit B. Um, it's a small optimization overall saves like what? 40 seconds green uh for your computer yeah yeah it's it's always you know dependent on everything um the nice thing is is that for competitiveness uh we have an auto splitter that times out loads uh and cutscene time so it kind of puts everyone kind of on the same field where our dual blades there they are all right we get some chainsaws now you wanted dual blades we're cutting down trees or something and we make our bone chest Nice, smooth menuing here. Always feels good. All right. Um, I want you guys to get really attached to our Palico dump truck because we will be leaving him to never come with us on a quest ever again until the very end for a very long time. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> one of the things that, uh, that, this, that makes this game a lot harder is monster AI. And when you have two things that the monster can target, it makes it really inconsistent to kind of predict what's going on. Um, so we just leave the cat behind. Um, one thing you'll see me doing before most of these quests is eating. Eating does, uh, a couple of things for us, uh, increases our base health sometimes, always increases our base stamina, and then will give us a, uh, attack boost for the meal that we eat. Um, it's just a small thing that we can do to kind of eke out just a little more damage. Um, for some weapons, we actually route it out because it doesn't change, you know, the combos that we do. But for a weapon like this, that A is a little bit weaker, is kind of based on hitting multiple times, and B, I actually don't have routed out at all. Um, you know, it'll be a little bit better to actually eat. So this is Kestadon. You might see here that I'm trying to get like explosion procs on them. I didn't get any there, wow. Um, Green, can you talk about what Blast is? Yeah, so this game has a mechanic called status. Different weapons can have a status on them. And when you hit, there is a, what is it? One in three chance that you'll apply status. Mm -hmm. That that fills up a gauge that kind of occurs in the background. And when that gauge fills up all the way, the status will occur. Defender weapons have blast, which is exactly what it sounds like. When it fills up, we get a big explosion. That explosion is independent of our attack so it's very powerful early game and still holds up late game so i didn't get very lucky positioning on these um and i'm also not getting very good blast procs oh finally only had to use the long combo um, but ideally what will happen here, Kessadon movement and RNG, these, these monsters are called Kessadon. I don't think I mentioned that, <laughs> but Kessadon movement and RNG, uh, is all RNG based. Um, it's kind of, uh, based on our position and, uh, based on like where they were at when we encountered them. Um, so killing the first group fast actually helps making the second group stay a little bit more bunched up. 
But if you're slow in the first group, the second group just starts to disperse. Um, and so you have to kind of pick and choose your your targets. So this is our first monster, uh, the Great Jogris. We love Jogris. He either goes really, really well uh, or really, really poorly uh, with unscripted weapons. Um, ideally, what's going to happen here is I am going to uh, time this out so he's positioned under a rock. Uh, when I get to him, I'm going to drop that rock on him. That rock counts as an environmental trap, uh, which deals a fixed 5% damage. Um, it also creates a really long knockdown time. Uh, we're just going to call that control against the monster. Gives me a really big opening to attack him. Uh, we need to kill it uh, before it tries to leave. Um, when monsters are leaving, uh, it's scary. Um, sometimes their AI will tell them to reset to the area when you stagger them. Other times they completely ignore that. Um, so ideally, this monster will not move. Um, when he drops the first red slinger ammo here, though, we're going to grab that and take advantage of a mechanic called slinger burst. Good positioning. going to do the optimal combo on the head here a couple times um especially with dual blades hitting the appropriate monster part is really important um different parts of the monster have different what we call hit zone values hit zone values uh determine what you know it, it helps determine the damage that that we that we deal to to something all right good that was amazing for dual blades um, a lot happened there. We're going to explain more of it <laughs> uh, later, but you saw I picked up that red slinger ammo. It's called a pierce pod. They aren't always pierce pods, but these ones are, um, when combined with the, uh, slinger burst action, it's a shotgun and it's, uh, damage is not scaled to the rank that we're at. It's not scaled to the damage that we deal. It's always a flat amount. And it's a lot for low rank and high rank. So we're going to take advantage of that. Uh, I have a quick question um, about yeah. the tracks. Will you ever be picking up any tracks to like unlock any of anything? Oh, boy. Talk about our favorite part of the speed run. So <laughs> some of you <laughs> some of you might remember, if you ever played this game casually, that you had to collect the question mark, question mark, question mark, Rathian tracks. Um, we have to do that still. That is something that we have to do. However, we spent a lot of time routing out and figuring out the patterns for those tracks. So, yes, we will be gathering tracks, and uh, we'll talk about it more when it comes up. But there are four monsters that we have to gather tracks for, three um, unique track patterns for each monster. So that means 12 total patterns that we have to memorize and execute you know, in that section. Um, it's a lot faster than it used to be, which is surprising to say. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the, the, the tracks will, you know, we will be doing them later. Normally for, for those that that's, that's like a required track gathering sequence. Um, we don't need to, we don't need to do that. Uh, any, anywhere else other than this, this one required location, right? So that's going to be for, for Pinky and then our Elder Dragons. Sorry, I'm like focusing on <laughs> menuing. I probably should let Green explain that. So my brains is kind of going everywhere right now. But luckily, I mean, you know, we're, we're getting through menuing. Uh, well, thank you, you for talk explaining about... it. I've seen you walking all over, all over all those tracks, and I was just like, oh, I wonder if they ever get any tracks. Like... <laughs> yeah. Um, Green, do you want to explain Expeditions? Uh, yeah. Oh, Anjaneth, dang. Oh, and I dodged um, there, dang. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a new type of uh, mission introduced in this game called an expedition. It has no time limit, no faint limit, and no ending timer when you capture a monster. Or uh, a yeah. hunt monster. You may or have noticed, monsters. you may have noticed uh, in that last quest we did, there was a 60 second timer after we killed the monster. Um, We've actually collected some items to shorten that down to 20 seconds uh using traps and trank bombs we can capture a monster once it's below 30 percent health so not only does that save us the time of dealing that last 30 percent damage 
it also cuts the end timer down to 20 seconds instead of 60. Overall, throughout the run, it saves uh, like two to three minutes or something like that. Uh, or no, it's more than that, isn't it's it? It's way more than that. Yeah, I was gonna ask how much time it takes something. to like gather the materials to make the traps or whatever, as opposed to the time on the timer. But it sounds like it, it's, it's a very good exchange. What's crazy about this, and I'll probably talk about this a lot because it still like scares me to this day. Um, but the routing for this game turned out to be incredibly convenient. We'll talk about it more on the uh, not the next hunt, but the following hunt. And you'll see exactly what I mean. Um, but really quick, I want to talk about this. Kuliaku is this big old chicken. Um, he doesn't like being flashed. When he gets flashed, he stands perfectly still. So we're going to take advantage of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he he literally just stands here. It's it's amazing. Um, you don't worry and about I, getting hit by the rock or anything. Nope. And this will this will happen. Uh, you know, for a while. I just did the dual blades thing where I throw a demon dance into nothing. <laughs> there's my first pod, and there's my second. He will do another flinch here. Good. And one, and a two. And we can leave. So, how did I know it was capture ready? I'm a genius. I'm the smartest person in the world. I can count out my damage that quickly, and I know exactly how much. No, um, pods. Those two red rocks, those two red pods that drop from him, those tell me exactly how much health he has left. Um, every monster, excluding one that we will hunt in this uh, run. Uh, we'll drop two of those red ammos at 30% health. When a monster is at 30 um, or lower, it is capture ready. Uh, so I wish I could say I was I was that smart to count my damage, but I'm absolutely not. I'm I'm just looking for the red things dropping. Um, so if I see two rocks, That's if I see amazing two... information. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's it's insane because people go like their entire hunting career in this game like not knowing any of this stuff, and then they're like, wait. That's that's linked to HP. You could just do that. I always waited for it to like limp away or something. Yeah, the limp or the skull or the skull. But we never get enough uh, investigation points on a monster to ever see the skull and waiting for the monster to limp away just takes way too much time. And with defender gear, we'll kill it before that happens um, in low rank and high rank. A monster's diagro animation from an area is linked to time in quest. Um, so the monsters won't leave, you know, an area until a specific amount of time. So that's only in low rank and high rank, by the way. Master rank is HP linked, actually. Um, completely, completely different mechanic, completely different game. All right, this is Pookie Pookie. Pookie Pookie is a little cool setup. If I don't get Anjanath, I got Anjanath. Um, so we're just gonna lure these guys. Man, two marathons in a row. This guy hates me. It's okay, I know how to deal with them. It's like getting stick bugged, only bigger. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm trying to uh, lure him into this area fast. So once he gets into this area, I can shoot dung at him. I want to make sure I hit him and not Pookie. Uh, now that I've hit him, he has one more roar that he's going to do. One, two. All right, cool. That was really tight. Um, I was trying to get, and I you know, did, but I was getting the um, wall bang in during that roar or before that roar actually happened. Um, I'm going to let Green talk about wall bangs really quick while I think about fighting this thing. Nice. <laughs> so Iceborne introduced the mechanic of the clutch claw, which with dual blades, we're not going to use too much, but it does give us access to the wall bang. So if you're clutched to a monster's head and it's not in an enraged state, you can launch all of your slinger ammo into it and send it flying. And if it hits a wall, it will take 2% of its health and give us a nice long knockdown. In low rank, we really only care about the knockdown because like five hits is more than 2% of the monster's health, but it's still very helpful. So this state Pookie is in right now is what we call a clogger or claw stagger. Uh, the game wants you to clutch claw on here, 
and that will extend its duration by 6 seconds. So for a lot of weapons, this is actually going to be our primary form of CC throughout the run. First pod. The nice thing too, since uh, since we have them with this weapon, we have a slinger burst with this weapon, so whenever we get um, a pierce pod, we are just going to shoot it three times at the monster, and they're, they're, then they're cap ready. Nice. <clears throat> All right, just going to do some inventory management here really quick. And then we're on to literally the best kind of quest. It's called that. It's called the best kind of quest. It is, in fact, the worst kind of quest. Uh, Spratic, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, what is the worst kind of mission or quest or anything like that in a speed run just like any speed run oh any uh escort man you nailed it this is an escort mission <laughs> this is literally on the rails an escort mission i was wondering um, if it was either the escort or you're gonna do one of those ones where you have to deliver an item and you have to carry that flipping egg or whatever the oh my gosh was. if i had to do an egg quest during this speed run i wouldn't be speed running this game i'm gonna be honest <laughs> <laughs> but this quest is an escort mission. It's an escort mission. It's an auto scroller. It's whatever you want to call it. It is terrible. It's actually the worst, the worst kind of quest because also this is the only cutscene with this mod that we can't skip. So you're saying this because... is a good time for me to read some donations is what you're saying. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely is. All right. Am I good? Am I good to go? Yeah, go for it. All right. Yummy Carol sent in $5. And it says, wishing Jal Bagel all the luck on his run. Thank you, Yami. Lurigami sent in $30. No comment, just generosity. Thank you so much for your donation, Lurigami. We still good to go with donations? Oh, yeah, keep going. Yeah, if you, got, right. if you got a few, go for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Runesworn sent in $25. Says, thank you all at QFG for setting up such a wonderful event to help raise money for Nami. As someone who struggles with anxiety and depression, I'm donating what I can to help those in need. Thank you so much, Runesworn. And we have one more donation here from Ravanon for $25, who says, if Monster Hunter World is the saga of Xenojiva, does that mean this run is also Xenosaga? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much, donations. all of you. Yeah, for your generosity. Do we still have downtime, or uh, how are we doing? Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fit in something here really quick because I was talking earlier, right? We were talking about you know gathering all the materials required for the run and like how is that actually faster than just you know the 40 seconds extra just to kill things? And it's it's really this quest right here. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a good quest. Um, we gather like 60 to 70% of all the materials that we need uh, throughout the throughout the entire run right here in this quest. Because it's an auto-scroller and we are waiting for specific checkpoints to be met, uh, we can actually just leave the, the, the cart, leave the handler and the uh, ecologists to just kind of come around here and gather all of the parish rooms and sleep herbs, all of the... Uh, uh, I mean, just like really anything. It's mostly parish rooms and sleep herbs, to be honest, uh, in this area. But we go around and we gather pretty much everything that we're going to need for this run now. Um, and like when as we start running out of things, we're actually in quests that just have those items in abundance. It's it's insane how convenient the routing of this game came around because the game just kind of gave us everything that we needed whenever we needed it. Um, so I mean, that's that's just something that I wanted to hit on because, I mean, there isn't... A, a, a moment in this run where it's like a hard grinding sesh, right? Like you don't have this weird like 20 minutes of grinding for items to make a specific armor or anything like that. Even in no add-ons, even when we can't use the defender gear, we actually don't do that. We go out of our way a little bit to like gather some extra bone piles and stuff. But besides that, you know, we don't ever uh, have to deal with that. Uh, if you want to read some more donations, I would love to hear them. Well, I just want to personally. say this is just such Dude. genius to do during the escort. If I had known that you could walk away from that cart 
Oh, would have right. Done it a long time ago. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, what I really want to talk about actually is all of the incentives that we have coming up. We have an awful lot of incentives. As y'all may or may not know, we had a little trouble with PayPal for a while. So we have a lot of really, really cool incentives that we are looking to meet, including for the run coming up after this Dragon Quest 11, the ultimate puff puff incentive, which I have heard is your your choice. Is that right? That's the runner's choice incentive. I, I really want to know what it is. <laughs> we are looking for $750 to unlock that. And we only have $41. So when you are getting those donations in to help out NAMI, to help out the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Please do remember to click on those incentives. We have another one for Dragon Quest XI to say no to Jade. Looking for $500 for that one, and we have no donations towards it whatsoever. And then a third one for Dragon Quest XI to slay the black, the sewer black dragon. Again, looking for $500 to unlock that and sitting at $90. Yes, I love all the excitement for, for Puff Puff in the chat. Bring that excitement straight to your wallet get those donations in unlock that incentive we need to see the ultimate puff puff and uh do i have time to talk a little more how are we doing oh yeah yeah no go for it i'm doing literally the exact same movement i just did again because it all respawns so i just get to do it again <laughs> all right well i want to talk to y'all about the incentive i am actually the most hype for unlocking now we definitely have a ways to go on this one but it is going to extend the length of the marathon by 90 minutes it is the chrono trigger fight dream devourer incentive we are looking for five thousand dollars to unlock that i know it's a ways to go but i really believe y'all can do it and there's just going to be so much incredible content unlocked if we are able to meet this incentive. So please get those donations in. Who doesn't love more speedrun marathon, I know, honestly? know, right? Gotta go slow. No, just kidding. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, more we're speedy. It's not, it's not going slow. It's adding more. It's, there's a difference. There's a difference. Exactly. There's All also right, so an incentive. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. You're good. No, actually talk about that incentive instead. <laughs> yeah, there's also an incentive for Chrono Trigger to watch the anime cutscenes, which I am just, that is, I am so incredibly down. We're looking for $1,000 to unlock that one. We're sitting at $65. So all sorts of things that we need to unlock. We're a little bit behind because of those PayPal problems earlier. So if you weren't able to donate earlier, let me reassure you that everything is working just fine now, and it is a wonderful time to donate. All right. So we are coming up to the last trigger of this quest. Um, I am placing a pitfall trap this type of trap. It works the same way as this shock trap that I worked uh, that I used before, but the monster kind of falls underground a little bit. Its head gets exposed. Um, and it lasts a little bit longer than a shock trap, but it takes longer to put down. Each has their own benefits and detriments. We'll mostly be using um, shock traps because they're faster to put down and a lot more convenient to make. We get hundreds of thunder bugs on this run. It's insane. Um, but I'm putting a trap down in a very specific spot, and I'm putting some bombs down too. Bombs do flat fixed damage. Does not matter what the part's um, uh, hardness value is or hit, hit zone value is. Uh, it will always just do that amount of damage to that area. Um, but I am now just kind of waiting for the cart to get up here, and I'm going to eat one of these Mite Seeds real quick. Uh, Mite Seeds gives us a flat increase to damage, um, increases our uh, our uh, raw damage by what, like five? Is it green? Or is it three? Uh, I believe it's ten. Is it ten? Oh my gosh, these things are amazing. <laughs> uh, but it only does that for three minutes. Um, it only does that for three minutes. Uh, so we're going to be using these kind of like right before our fights. Uh, there are some fights that just don't last that long, but since I'm using a weapon that is not scripted, I'll be trying to get the most out of them as I can. Oh, hey, look, our trap. So, Baroth. Um, Baroth is a great fight because his weak spot is not his, um, his head, but his arms. Oh, it did not swing. I was trying to swing reverse that. There we go. I like One, the in reach though, two. Blade. Oh yeah. So I tenderized the uh, the arms there to get a little bit more damage out of them. 
I'm trying to like watch my positioning here very closely. If I hit those birds with literally anything, a Diablos shows up here and ruins my entire day. Uh, we don't want that. Diablos is always a time loss. Um, like, for any of you that ever played this game. Birds are a trigger for the Diablos? Yup. You're learning so many things today, aren't you? I am. Ooh. Did, did y'all explain the tenderization mechanic? Uh-oh. All right, well, I hit once. That's not a great sign. So, you know what? We're just going to watch that right there. Um, I'm going to make sure that he doesn't walk into that. Stop, sir! Oh, God. So, <laughs> this is terrible. He's going to have one health coming out of this, and Diablos is going to be here. Uh... <laughs> The other thing, too, is that this animation cannot be uh, interrupted with a shock trap. I actually have to wait for it to end and then uh, flash him and then... I still have to wait. Still have to wait. This is to make up for that bone earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> My RNG was just too good. All right. Uh, was there anything else that I was gonna gather up there? Uh, the thunderbugs, but I, I don't need them. Uh, so we're we're good. All right, everything's everything's fine. Everything's fine. We actually had a really good. Everything else about that was great until I hit that bird. Uh, that bird acts as like a sonic trigger for Diablos, which lures him there and then activates that pitfall. Um, the bad thing about that is that I used three flash pods. Um, there's there's opportunities to get more, and I'll definitely have to get them, especially with uh, dual blades. Um, all right. Uh, someone mentioned something earlier um, in, in chat. I, I read it over while we were talking about incentives and stuff, and I actually wanted to touch on it. Um, someone had mentioned, um, do we gather dung pods to uh, to save ourselves from basil geese? Um, in this game, there are monsters that are called invaders. They like to invade on your hunts and make your hunts harder. What's really cool about this run, though, is that every assigned mission, all the missions that we do, have zero RNG as far as it, uh, when it comes to uh, what monsters are present, um, the health that the monster has, the size of the monster. Everything is static. Everything is fixed, and there's no RNG associated with it. So the only time that we need dung is um, with the one expedition, or excuse me, with the, with the one a uh, hunt that we did with Pookie because that Anjanath can have two different spawns, uh, and um, with a hunt later. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry, I, my brain just shut off for a second because I was very confused about why I had another trap. It, it's one a.m. for me. I'm I'm keeping my brain open. <laughs> uh, uh, but we'll need one later against uh, Pink Rathian. There is a Legion that likes to show up. It's a scripted, you know, appearance. Um, I might use it. I might not use it. We have other ways of dealing with that. Green, why does Jurotodus suck? <laughs> uh, so you may notice this deep water. Uh, and this or is another RNG. reason he sucks. Uh, the opener is completely RNG. Um, this deep water, we hate it for two reasons. Um, one, it slows us down. But the bigger reason we hate it is you can't place a trap in it. So you can't capture him if he's in it. Uh... That alone is awkward. In addition, Jiratotis doesn't follow the two pod rule. Instead of being capture ready at two pods, he's not quite capture ready after three pods. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's just such a fun fight. Why? <laughs> Cause this this monster is great and Capcom is infallible. I thought y'all were going to say something about head. the mud, but it's all about the trap placement, which really is a big pain in the suit. That is everything that we care about in this game. Trap placement. Uh, yeah. Oh, I wanted to ask, because I saw that you were using the um, the vine trap, and I was wondering if it really matters, if it's part of the route, which trap you're using. Um, you know, since it's two different types of traps. So, uh, it's mostly about accessibility. Okay, so the mud is also terrible, which you, like, asked about a second ago. And it <laughs> is, but it's usually not a problem because I'm never fighting him over here, and yet here we are. Uh, okay, good, that hit the head. Um, so yeah, the traps, it actually just comes down to accessibility. Um, pitfall traps are a little bit harder to make throughout the run. Shock traps are a lot easier, so we usually just stick with shock traps. 
uh, my last horn pod. Pitfall traps we primarily use for CC rather than actually capturing because they do last longer. I don't know why I called it a vine trap. I was like, who's playing? No, no, you mean Pitfall it's trap. still. <laughs> Just vine trap is something else. All right, good. So, uh, yeah, all right, that, that's, that's not terrible. That's, that's fine. Uh, could have been better. Could have had a better opening. Uh, but the opening is, is, is it's positional based. Um, you want to be on like the left side of them when you start the hunt uh, and it's to bait out specific AI, but it's not consistent. Um, Green found a way to make it a little bit more consistent with a flash, but then there's still like a 50-50 chance that it just doesn't work because of head placement. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 still just kind of up in the air. Um, a lot of the scripting for this game kind of comes down to how do we make our opener 100% accurate? And then after that, how do we chain statuses together? So things like um, claw staggers, knockdowns, KOs, um, all of those have hidden values that are that are, you know, acting behind the scene. And we kind of calculate out and script out how we can chain those together. Um, so you mean we'll, we'll, you'll hear us like talk about like full locks and half locks and stuff like that, but with dual blades we haven't really discovered any of that yet. So we did, we aren't really going to talk about that too much. What we will talk about is Toby Kadachi though, and how it's both my favorite monster and my least favorite monster. <laughs> this uh this fight is interesting to say the least. Um, so most of the time monsters weak zones will be their head. We've had some instances where they aren't. Um, this is one of those instances where it's not. It's tails, actually. It's better hit zone for slashing weapons. Um, so we're going to be aiming for that. Problem is, is that based on your position, when you are fighting a monster, we'll bait out specific attacks. The smaller the monster, the harder it is to do that. Um, but for Toby, for some reason, his tail is like 90% of his body. So it's really easy to do this. Um, he has a backflip attack that he can do that will, even with defender gear, one shot us if we don't get lucky. Um, there is a skill on this armor set called Divine Blessing. Um, I think we have two levels of it now since we changed out the chest. Um, but what it says is that occasionally, you know, just based on RNG, uh, we will not take damage. You know, or it'll significantly reduce the amount of damage that we will take. Um, an amazing skill, a super comfort skill. Uh, you know, it doesn't help our DPS, but it does help the fact that we just don't have to farm armor. Uh, it's... It's really nice when it procs and when it doesn't, you know, you kind of sit there and cry a little bit. Like, oh man, where was my divine blessing? I'm running this skill and yet I don't get it ever. <clears throat> uh, but this this opener is, once again, not 100% accurate. Uh, it's, it's close though, I'm getting there. Uh, with smaller weapons, it's a lot easier to do. But what I'm going to be doing is placing down two large barrel bombs and exploding them the moment the quest starts. Um, then I'm going to go for a leg break on the front leg. Dodge in. Good AI, bad AI. Quiet. Uh, oh, come on. All right, so I'm getting some very unfortunate AI where I'm getting a lot of very fast attacks all at once. Last proc will help here. There it is. That's my leg break. So now I can go and attack the tail. So this is actually our first instance of a noticeable part break uh certain monsters when you deal enough damage to certain parts will fall over or do a long flinch animation so when we can we like to take advantage of that oh i got stunned that's why i was gaining stamina i got very lucky here with ai oh i missed that i was trying to turn it not slinger burst like i did I did it again. I keep missing the slinger burst and I'm stunned again. All right, cool. Well, this is going really well. Knock me off the edge. Please don't. All right. I'm about to heal really, here really quick. Um, Toby Kadachi does this nonsense where he likes to jump up into trees, making him a lot harder to predict. But if I can get lucky here, there we go. Nice. That's a uh, special knockdown with him. When he's in the tree, he has this really small threshold to knock him out of it. First pod. Might be able to skip it. Yep, second pod. Dodge in. There it is. Please don't move. Thank you. All right. So besides getting hit like 900 times, that was okay. Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> nice recovery. 
Yeah, Toby just does that. He's really hard to lock down. He's really hard to just kind of control because that first initial uh, status against him is based on a part break. And then, you know, I kind of smooth brained it through the rest of that, missing all those slinger bursts. Um, I was trying to slinger burst him out of the air because you can get a really cool knockdown animation against him if you do it right. Um, but oh, I'm going to blame it on 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anjanath, this fight is something. Uh, green, go for it. <laughs> so, Anjanath is actually our first and I believe only instance of a status other than Blast being Sleep. So, what Sleep oh, we use does... poison later. Technically, oh yeah, that's true. Poison. <laughs> um, what Sleep does is makes the monster fall asleep obviously but the thing we like about it is the hit that the next hit on the monster will deal double the damage and janath starts in the zone with that big rock we dropped on great jaggers and you might remember that rock does a fixed five percent of the monster's health so when we start this quest we're gonna sleep and janath under that rock and drop it on him to get an instant 10 percent off of his health Ooh, that's so cool <laughs> big numbers if we were doing this with Switch Axe, it'd be a lot cooler. <laughs> Switch Axe, we have a full script on this thing that is insane to watch. Um, but this is still a really cool opener because it also gives us two uh, very large knockdown windows. Um, four, good. Eat that. And good. <clears throat> but I'm just going to be baiting him underneath this rock and putting him to sleep. It takes two sleep knives to do it. I made four just in case. Don't give me the jump. The jump is the worst. The jump I actually can't, like, status him during. I'm going to try to bait him back around this way. Yeah, I just go to sleep right there. That'll work. Uh, I need to put this pitfall down where he's going to be, where he's going to end up. So I kind of use his back as a marker for that. I have 100% done the sleep knives before, or uh, put him to sleep and then just didn't put the, uh, didn't like sleep him underneath the rock. And so I just miss entirely. <laughs> Definitely happens. So you may notice Anjanath was very clearly inside of that trap, but not falling into it. Uh, similar to Baroth with Diablos, during that knockdown, he is actually immune to the traps. So we take advantage of that to chain the CCs together by positioning the pitfall underneath him during that knockdown. I'm gonna go for a mount here, actually. Yes! Uh, you wanna talk about fast mounts? Yes. So, if you've played this game before, you may know that when you mount, you're supposed to stab the monster a lot. It takes a long time, and it'll eventually let you do a finisher. Uh, if we have a slinger arrow that can flinch, like that scatter nut we just had, uh, we can shoot the slinger arrow into the monster to get flinches immediately and end them out significantly faster. For our purposes, mounts are slow. Dang, I didn't get good AI. All right. Uh, that's okay. Um, the area that he transitions to here is HP dependent. Um, there is two values that sending him, that send him this way and one value that sends him up towards his nest. Um, I wanted the other one because then we get to take advantage of uh, flash pods. I wonder if I can do it here. Got it. Let's go. Um, now, in the other area, we can lock him into like trying to climb a, uh, a ledge over and over again. I thought we could just keep doing that, uh, but you know, I'm a gamer, so I'll just do that here instead. <laughs> Gotta grab that and drop it. Uh, the nice thing is, is that I needed uh, flash pods and I'm right next to some, so I'm just gonna do that. I'm looking for the first pod still, I haven't seen that. Yes, the do nothing AI. First pod. Uh, 
Come on. There we go. All right. Very nice. Uh, let's see if I can't make it to these flash bugs. I knew where they were. They were literally right next to me. I'm not going to make it now. Yoink and yoink. Good. That's actually a really yeah. good pickup. <laughs> <laughs> the other direction only has one that we can grab. This way at least has two. Uh, so if we're going to get a transition and it goes this way, at least we can get two off of it. Um, all right. Uh, we'll check for uh, RNG, but it looks like we got what we needed, uh, which is an Anjanath pelt. Whoops. Accidentally saved. Time lost. Whoopsies. Uh, but we need an Anjanath pelt and two large bones, which we have multiple chances for the large bone, but only the one chance for the Anjanath pelt. Um... The, uh, we got the pelt, so we're good there. Don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, it's to unlock a camp that makes things a lot faster. It saves about two minutes uh, getting it. If you don't get it, we usually reset, um, but it looks like we got it, so, you know, we're good. Uh, you can do the run without it. It just, it, everything takes a lot more time, and uh, one hunt is really sketchy because you don't have any time to do anything else other than run for the monster. Uh, but we'll talk about that when we get there. You'll kind of see. You know, what we're what we're talking about there. Uh, the next hunt though is uh, Zora Magdros. Um, so callback. Um, I saw a question in chat. Uh, someone asked, "What is Xeno percent?" Xeno percent is what we call the category that I am running. It's we call that the any percent category. Monster Hunter games have always kind of had option of naming the uh, categories after the monster that it ends with. Um, so in this category, the uh, category ends with hunting Xeno Jiva. So we call it Xeno Percent. Um, this is a partial any percent category, you know, kind of moment that we're coming up to um, called Zora 1. Uh, there's two partial any percents, Zora 1 and Zora 2. They're just linked to really big moments in the game. Um, so we kind of put them there. They're also like nice, small one hour speed runs like this one is. Uh, and the next one is like adds like 40 minutes onto it. Um, but that's just a, a neat thing, you know, even if uh, a three hour long speed run uh, is just outside of your reach, but you would want to speed run Monster Hunter, this is a category in itself, just this to this hunt right here. Uh, so this is Zora Magdaros. This quest is, once again, an auto scroller, um, but we can do things to make it scroll faster, at least in this first area. Uh, we have two phases, um, a barrier phase and then like a riding him phase. Um, to finish this hunt, there's a couple of check marks that need to be finished. Um, in this first phase, uh, shooting a binder is one of them. We just did that, and we shot it in a way that it's going to be faster than any, o any other version of shooting that binder will be. I grabbed the wrong thing here. I want that. Don't worry, you actually can't lose time on this quest. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 everything is just kind of waiting around for the next thing to happen. Um, but... For the most part, we're going to be canceling animations that Zora Madros, that's him right there. You guys might remember him. He wrecked our boat. Uh, we're going to be canceling his animations um, and just kind of uh, making sure that we're in the right place at the right time for specific things. For this first phase, the binder that we shot at him that has already ended, by the way, um, is one thing that he has to do. Another is he has to do an attack against this cannon and attack against that cannon down there. We are going to use those cannons to cancel those attack animations the moment they start, so he transitions to the next one. Also, if we do things the right way and we time the cannons the right way, it'll stagger him into positions that will inevitably make him end really close to the barrier. Um, the last kind of target for this is him being in a specific position against the barrier for him to destroy it. Um, so we are going to be waiting here for what I think is a is a cue. I, I'm going to miss it because I keep missing it that might be it four cannon all right so i have to shoot an extra couple ballista here i have to count those because i'm trying to set up a four five six seven i'm setting up a stagger on this next cannon um instead of a part break so these are just kind of like all those hidden mechanics it's a really really intricate thing the big thing to take away from here is that we're using these cannons to cancel attack animations and that's kind of the neat thing um, because it has to at least start those animations, just not end them. 
Um, so this is a use of that stealth mechanic. I'm wearing a ghillie mantle, obviously leaves in a desert biome. It's a perfect way to hide from annoying wing drakes. It makes sense, right? It all makes sense. Uh, so I'm waiting for a specific head kind of flail here, right here. Uh, and that's kind of it. There we go. So that gives me a stagger instead of the next thing that we're going to get, which is a part break. I want that stagger because I'm, I'm timing out damage and also positioning. So there's my part break. Get away from these wing drakes because they're annoying. We're going to get one more stagger on this thing, and that's all of the animations that he needs to do canceled so he progresses to the barrier. I probably got a slow barrier here just kind of looking at his position. Um, but uh, that really only like loses 25 seconds and it's really hard to do it consistently. Green can do it for some reason. I can't. <laughs> I, I, you know, my, my eyes are broken or something. <laughs> um, but that's, uh, man, that's Zora phase one. You know, there's, there's so much to say about it and it's probably one of the least interesting fights in the entire game. Um, Zora two is a little bit better, but it's still kind of the same thing. Um, one thing that the game does try to trick you into doing here is dealing more damage than you actually need to. Um, he does have a health gate that he has to reach by the time he reaches the second barrier. Um, but that health gate is really low. It's equal to about 10 cannonballs and two ballista. We shoot 10 cannonballs and so far 17 ballista. So we have we have surpassed that. Don't really got to worry about it too much. Uh, so the last thing that we do here, because we have the time to, we're just waiting for him to transition out of this area one. Um is selling all this stuff so that audio that we're getting right there those 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 voice lines those dialogues tell me that he has made it to the barrier so i can use that to determine if i got a fast zora or a slow zora i got a slow zora it's okay um as long as it moves it moves one large monster bone we need two of those unfortunately uh but this hunt and the next couple can actually give them to us so i'm not too worried about that um, one Anjanath pelt we got, which we're good, and then 12 iron ore. We need seven of those to progress the game uh, in, in, in a good way. Uh, we'll talk about more on those things later, but that's the last bit of um, material RNG that we need to uh, get to the run. A lot of stuff going on. I mean, these are things that we are constantly thinking about because the moment we miss one of these things, we try to salvage a run and we're trying to figure out where can we make up those missing parts. Um, iron ore are easily made up. Uh, large bones can be made up, uh, but the Anjanath pelt absolutely cannot be. We only have one chance at that. And if you don't get it, it's a reset, unfortunately. Um, like I said, you can do it without, which we would definitely do here in, in a speedrun marathon. Um, it's just <laughs> two minutes slower. <laughs> So, you know, happy that we got it. Uh, so this is phase two. We're now running around in his back, and the NPCs are losing their absolute minds trying to tell us to break the cores. We're not going to do that. Um, we don't need to deal any more damage to Zora. We've already met the health gate. It, the quest will end. Um, but the other thing, too, is, is that if we do damage the cores and the core breaks, then Zora Magdaros does this really big flinching animation, stops his movement entirely, and it wastes, like, 25 seconds per core break it is asinine how much time it will actually lose so we just don't do that um because we don't have to in zora 2 however we do need to meet a much larger health gate so we will be attacking the cores and trying not to break them my general rule is dealing about 800 damage and i have some timing that i have to meet there um, we'll talk about it more when we get there but for all intents and purposes we're just going to run around do some mining on his back because we have the time to uh, and, uh, I don't know, maybe do like a Fortnite dance up on his head or something like that. Who knows? <laughs> um, so if you have, this is, this is an amazing, uh, an amazing time. Uh, if you have any donations or if you want to talk about any incentives or maybe what we're raising money for, this is like the, the perfect time to do that. I super want to do all of that. And I also want to talk about how I've always just been so focused on fighting Zora Magdaros. I never noticed how beardy it is. Like, right? Extremely <laughs> beardy. It has the most He's epic got a good beard. Beard, right? Amazing. All right. So my hero zero sent in twenty five dollars and said, "I'm doing my part. You absolutely are. Thank you so much for your generosity, my hero zero. Definitely not." Johnny sent in five dollars. Says, "Good luck with the speedy bagel. You got this." Also, green is my favorite color. And then oh, I hope God. I get your. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 I'm just laughing at it. 
I hope I get your name right here. I believe it is Yorvanos, but it might be Lorvanos. Either way, they sent in $25 and said, cheers, everyone. So all kinds of awesome donations that we have rolling in. I'm just going to take a look at our incentives and see how we are doing on those, actually. So we are still sitting. It looks like we got a little bit towards one of those Dragon Quest 11 ones that I had mentioned before. We were currently uh, sitting at $140 out of the $500 needed to unlock the Slay the Sewer Black Dragon incentive in Dragon Quest 11. So still need some donations for that. Of course, our Runner's Choice incentive also has a ways to go. The most exciting name uh, incentive of all the Dragon Quest 11 Ultimate Puff Puff incentive. If y'all want to see the ultimate puff puff, I have heard it is quite spicy. <laughs> We're looking for $750 for that. And we only have $41. And then finally, the third incentive that we have for Dragon Quest XI, say no to Jade. We're looking for $500 for that one. We don't have any donations towards that whatsoever. So please do remember when you are getting your donations and for NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, to check out our incentives and click on one of them. So your donation goes not only towards NAMI, but towards unlocking more awesome content. How are we doing? Do I have time to talk about- Oh, you have, more? you have. have so you see I've, that, you see that wooden barrier all the way over there? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, I have done the Zora Magdaros fights. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just we, wasn't we all, sure how much sure more have, talking we? about uh, Zora Magdaros you wanted to do. I can definitely talk about things other than Zora Magdaros. You know, so, I, have, I have already said everything I need to say about this creature because we have until it gets all the way over there. So, you know, you got you got free reign of whatever you want to talk about. I'm going right. to be doing a Fortnite dance back here and like <laughs> some menuing. <laughs> but then just, uh, you know, you might mention that for a moment. There are all kinds of gestures in this game that are really, really oh. fun that you can unlock. Just like a billion types of really silly dances and things, ways to interact with people, which is great because it's such uh, an international game. They let you play with people all over the world. And so if you want to communicate without words, they give you a lot of means to do that. There it is, the International Monster Hunter sign of, hello, I am friendly, let's go hunt. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna talk about more incentives because we still need to unlock that one that I'm really, really excited about, the one that is gonna add 90 minutes of content to this entire marathon. It is the Chrono Trigger Fight Dream Devourer Incentive. We're looking at a big, 5k for that and sitting at five dollars but you all have been amazingly generous just look at our donation total right now twenty seven thousand nine hundred sixty three dollars raised for nami and i know y'all are gonna raise some more so please do keep that incentive in mind when you are getting those donations in. and then of course the one that i'm really really hyped for the chrono trigger watch the anime cutscenes and stuff <laughs> which um I am a big weeb, so let's unlock it. We are looking for $1,000. We're sitting at 65. And just a little reminder that we have some really cool prizes for when you donate. For a donation minimum of $15, you will be entered to win a Dragon Quest Slime Family 3D Shadow Box. Now, if you want to get a good look at that, you just need to hit exclamation point prizes in chat, and that will take you exactly where you need to go to be able to take a look at it directly. I just wanted to let you know that was donated by RPG Limit Break staff, so thank you so much for that. We also have, for a minimum donation of $25, you will be entered to win a Super Nintendo with component video mod. Super, super heckin' cool. That was donated by P Diggity Dog. And if you want to see some more from P Diggity Dog, commissions are open for console mods and refurbishing. You can find them at twitter.com slash P Diggity Dog. And now I'm gonna spell it for you. P-D-I-G-G-I-T-Y-D-O-G-G. -G -G. 
And they are also on Facebook.com under the same name, P Diggity Dog. All right. This is my one and only contribution to this speed run, and I absolutely love it. This is called Nergigante Quick Kill. All it is is putting bombs down next to a rock, dodging this roar, and placing down these barrel bombs. And that's it. That's Nergigante Quick Kill. We've oh done it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> We used oh to hunt my... that thing. We used to fight him on the back. People have died here and lost whole runs to it. Not me. Get out of here, <laughs> Nier Gigante. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. I absolutely love doing that. Uh, it is one of my favorite things in this speed run. And I found out on accident because the game usually only lets you put down three, uh, two of those yellow bombs. Uh, but if you hold forward, you can actually uh, speed up the animation to place them and get a third one in. It is the weirdest interaction. It is the it is the strangest thing, but I'm so happy it works. Oh wow! <laughs> All right. So this is uh, this portion of the speedrun we call uh, Colossal Task CT for short, also Zora Two. We have a lot of names for things, uh, but they all mean the same thing. It is six hunts uh, back to back to back to back to back to back to back um, that are all kind of fast, but they are all almost entirely unscriptable. <laughs> um, these are the most RNG heavy uh, fights in the entire game. Um, it's be just because we're starting to get to a section of the game where more interactions are starting to happen, right? Things are starting to interact with um, the other monsters on the map. Um, with more uh, environmental effects. Um, the monsters themselves just have different thresholds as, as compared to the other things that we fought. Things have more health now, uh, a little bit, not a lot. Um, so it's uh, it's starting to all kind of change a little bit. Um, we, uh, we are also going to do our first weapon upgrade. Um, weapon upgrades for Defender Gear are linked to assigned missions. Um, so it takes um, a Anjanath scale to do our first upgrade. Uh, we saw Anjanath earlier. We could actually get a scale then, too. I probably should have done that since I saw him on Pink, uh, Pookie. But doing it on Pookie is actually um, asking for for a headache. Uh, we usually do it on the Kulia Ku quest. If we see him there, we will try to get it. Um, but this is uh, this is when we unlock uh, my favorite area, the uh, research base. Green, why is the research base the best thing in the world? Because it's small. It has it's so small. <laughs> it has everything that's in Astera in an area about a quarter of the size. <laughs> the shop is right next to the handler, so you can post a quest, go to the shop, and then right next to the shop is the smithy, so you can do any upgrades you need to. It's so nice. What's insane is, is this area used to not contain the smithy, and it made it the worst place to possibly be. Um, that was before the Iceborne update for the game came out. After Iceborne came out, they added a smithy there, and it now became, like, it It, it changed all of our routing. It changed literally everything. I um, literally didn't know they had added a smithy. I was just like, oh, I hate <laughs> that place. Why are this the best place? Let's hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I mean they, they added that, and it was just... It changed. It changed literally everything. It changed all of, all of our routing, how we uh, how we move around the map, how we move around um, Astera. Even it just it changes everything. It's faster to leave Astera and go to the research base to do things. Like even just to like talk to the handler. If that's the only thing that we're gonna do, it's faster just to leave Astera and just go there. Even though there's the travel time, it's still faster running around yeah. Astera. Yeah. Oh, such yep. A place. It's so unfortunate because Astera is like my absolute favorite area, uh, and. It's just, it's too big. It's pretty, pretty annoying. <laughs> um, so this is another expedition quest. Uh, we have to do two things here. Spot the ZTAQ, which was that blue raptor. Um, shout out to Jurassic World. And then uh, unlock this camp. Uh, we aren't actually going to unlock it. We're just going to unlock the delivery. Uh, it would be amazing if we could unlock it, but it takes a ZT ZTAQ uh, material that we just, we don't ever get because we don't hunt one. All right, the first fun fight of of the run, Pook, uh, pa Paolumu. 
Oh, we um, haven't been having fun so far. I've been having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say I say fun in, in asterisks and like with the most with the most sarcasm I could possibly say. Okay, um, okay, but okay. like literally, literally all of these hunts are. You'll hear me say it for pretty much all of them because they're they're all such RNG fests. Um, but I don't know. Paolo's weird. Uh, he just doesn't follow any of our rules. Paolo is adorable. Whoops. It is. It is a big, adorable, fluffy bat. What am I doing? Uh, that we're gonna kill. Yes, <laughs> yes that, that we are going to murder. Well, technically um, capture, so it's all good. All good. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. We we, we bring them back, um, and you know they. Did we run by the capture up. area earlier? Has anybody seen it so far? Not yet. Oh yeah. well, we we will later. Yeah. All right. So there's our upgrade, and then we're gonna forge an armor piece here really quick. The high metal greaves. Um. So we need the high metal greaves for the skill that it has called heavy artillery. Um, on Zora 1, we were shooting cannons and ballista. The high metal greaves makes the cannon and ballista stronger. So for Zora 2, we'll have a little more damage. It actually cuts out a bunch of cannons for us. It saves over a minute. Um, it is like the smallest little routing decision to save over a minute. It's amazing. <clears throat> uh, but Paolo is a, is a is a unique fight. I have a couple different ways I like to do this. I have a lot of options for ad lib, just depending on the kind of RNG I get. Um, we'll see what happens as I fight with dual blades. If I can get a couple of claggers uh, together, and if I can't, then I'm going to be using a pitfall trap here to just kind of stop him from moving. Because oh my goodness, Paolumu does not stop moving. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna make him stop. Uh, but I, I always talk about the convenience of this run. Three Thunderbugs right there, two on coming to the same area before. We have two Flashbugs right here. Literally all the materials that we need for this run are just in front of us all of the time. It is honestly like the, the routing for this game just came so seamless. It's insane. All right. Paolumu. Batloon. Shaped like a friend. We're gonna start with that wall bang. Like one. Yeah, right. Let's see if I can't get this tenderized. There's a lot of figures and plushies to this game, and let me tell you, this one is fun to hug. <laughs> oh boy. Clutch Claw really do be targeting. <laughs> So I'm going to do a manual tenderize there, and that's going to give me... Oh, nice, a pure spot. I actually did not think that it was going to be that. So we're just going to take advantage of that. Uh, Okay, cool. It just didn't do the thing that I wanted it to do, which is fine. Ooh. We really didn't talk about it. Uh-oh. Uh Blue friend, no! <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. That is so lucky. That I can't was... believe that actually worked out. Uh -huh. So Lumu's breath animation canceled my sleep. Then it fell into the sleep. So that's just a free wall bang. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the luckiest man alive. <laughs> Where did that end? Stop hitting the button. <laughs> it's okay, I'm making up for it. Nonsense with that Diablos earlier. Uh, yeah, it, it, just slightly. Oh, I missed that last one. Oh well. Uh, I'm not gonna grab this. I'm just gonna deal damage. He's gonna fly here soon. Hey, look at that. So he's actually immune to this flash until he does his very first attack. And then I'm just going to shoot this out here and done. Get on the ground. First pod, it's a thorn pod. Second pod, it's also a thorn pod, but it's also capture ready. So I'm just going to wait for the next attack. Wait for that hitbox to end and we can capture him. Runnies are really bad animations. You'll hear us talk about it a lot because it turns the entire monster's body into a hitbox. We haven't really talked about that. Um, this game, like most action RPG games, has iframes, immunity frames, um, frames in which we cannot be hit by attacks. Um, this game, 
uh, natively has 13 iframes on a dodge roll. That's this right here. Uh, 13 frames. If you know anything about frame data for other games, let's say like, I don't know, Dark Souls 3, it's literally half. Um, so if you ever found dodging or uh, anything like that difficult in uh, Dark Souls, we have literally half of that. Um, so just, just something to keep in mind. So if you see me dodge roars and uh, and dodge attacks and stuff like that, it's be, it, you know you kind of have like an idea of actually how tight that that really is. Um, and certain attacks that the dual blades has um, actually has iframes on it, which is really nice for it. Uh, so I can use that to dodge, you know, certain animations, certain attacks as well. <sighs> Radabon. Green, take it away. This monster just... Uh, <laughs> so, I told you this section really? of the speed run. Every, literally every monster in this in this section is 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 psi. So this is the monster. <laughs> yeah. So half of his moves just involve him running to the other end of the arena. That's so Not good. only that, there's some bug friends here that love to paralyze you. The one thing that's been improved about this fight is this opener. It used to be um, RNG if you hit it, but now we can flash him to guarantee his positioning. Now, if only we could make oh, the rest of the fight that. consistent. <laughs> Alright, I actually got it. Nice. Uh, that didn't stop the roar, though. That's unfortunate. I'm behind it enough, I don't get hit here. Ooh, that's actually great RNG. Good positioning. He's a god. So I probably looked uh, familiar. That's sleep. Sleep is scary. I probably should have tenderized. It gives me a thorn pod. Be careful here. All right, good. I got that animation. That's actually great. Um, that's a special topple animation with Urgan when he's in the like rolling around at the speed of sound. When he's doing his best Sonic the Hedgehog impression, uh, we can actually knock him out of that using uh, Slinger Pods. Uh, it's just not the most consistent thing. So wait here. Uh oh, he's coming like immediately back for us. Scary. Lingering hitboxes, man. Dual blade things, man. I, like, this entire area is a slope, too. And with dual blades, that's just the worst. Uh, first pod. It's the worst for a speedrun is, like, the best. I love sliding those slopes. Stop, please. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that was just resetting his AI. So he's actually capture ready. Uh, but it was, like, super sketchy because he was trying to leave. Where am I? Oh, okay, we're right here. He was trying to leave, and that flash pod actually caught him, so... All good. No, yeah, like, the, the Beyblade... Beyblading on a monster's back, really cool to look at. Uh, unfortunately, for, like, going fast, it's not great against a lot of monsters, and against Urigan, it's really bad because his entire body will resist it until we break all those spikes. So it's just a little bit faster to just, like, focus his head and, you know, ignore everything else. Luckily, that, that went really well. We actually got um, we actually got a lot of uh, good blast procs on there, some good flinches and staggers. That actually went really fast as far as dual blades is concerned. Well, I'm sorry for the dual blades and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shiner, does DB need a uh, clutch claw boost to do tendies on one claw uh, one clutch claw attacks? No. Um, it has a um, specific attack that can tenderize in one clutch claw attack. Um, I've done it a couple times. It's a little hard to hit because clutch claw targeting is is not fun, um, but it can actually do it in one hit. Uh, I've, I've done it a handful of times so far, um, but demon dance, uh, double like windmill attack. I actually have no idea what any of these things are called. And then you do a clutch claw attack. Um, it won't drop a slinger ammo, but it will tenderize in a single hit. All right, Legiana. Do I flash and pray? Probably. <laughs> so 
So Legiana is an interesting fight. Um, it, unlike all the other fights that we have been doing so far, doesn't have an opening cutscene because we we more or less just watched it um, in that cutscene that we just skipped. Um, so instead, he's starting on a global cycle the moment that we load into the uh, to the game. Uh, we want to be able to meet him in the area that he's going to be in on that cycle to uh, set up our opener. He's actually going to be landing in the area so we can actually uh, get our opening against him. Um, opener is really neat. It's a uh, wall bang into some barrel bombs uh, followed by a second wall bang. And then uh, from there, we just pray that he flies a couple of times so we can flash him out of it. And we get some good claggers, but a lot, a lot of praying. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, the RNG heavy uh, fight is what what you're saying. Yeah, a lot of these are like literally all of these are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's really funny is that, that after Zora two, we start getting back into completely scripted fights. It's it's nuts. It's funny. Um. But with Dual Blades, not so much scripted. It's just these fights, they can just do so many different things and they interact in so many different ways that it it makes it a lot sketchier. But the fights later, it's, you know, there's a lot of room for error and then you get one shot by something. So it's, it's really just like playing smart and appropriate. Uh, Which is should be good here. Throughout all of Monster Hunter, whether you're doing a speed run or playing casually. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my things that I always say. It's like knowing why you failed or like why you got hit there. Oh please, sir! Clutch claw targeting. All right, I didn't get lucky. Try again. Good bite. Let's go. One. Two, three. We're just gonna get back on the ground. So wall bangs are nice. They do two percent damage. So we've done four percent. I've also queued up a uh, tenderize here. No, oh, I don't have any stamina. <laughs> <laughs> just stand inside here. Uh, but right now, what I want is a clagger. That works too. There's my clagger. And now I get my first pierce pod. And we all know what pierce pod do. It hurt. You know what, Beyblade? Oh, I miss. Gonna wait for an attack here. There we go. Oh, nope, that doesn't work. There are certain attack animations that he can do that just, you know, make him immune to the flashes. So we do have to kind of look out for those. Ice Blight's not great here, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And I'm gonna hover my flashes even though I don't wanna use them. Slope is so annoying here. And we're gonna get another pod. I'm actually, you know, I'm gonna play this safe and flash them. Um, the way that, like, Diagros work in this game is he can just immediately leave. There we go. He can just immediately leave if he's flying. Um, so we just want to make sure that he's on the ground. Um, a monster leaving an area is not ideal. It'll happen a couple times. Like, it happened with Anjanath earlier. Uh, but for a, a lot of these monsters, it shouldn't happen at all. Uh, and you have to go Nolberry so far if Legiana gets yeah. away. Yeah, Legiana likes to uh, travel the entire world. It's not great. 
<clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so next is Odagaron or Odagarin or I don't know. What are some of the other awful ways to say its name? Angry puppy. Uh, Angry dog. <laughs> Clifford the big red dog. <laughs> See, I call him. I love calling him Clifford. He's a red dog and he's, you know, just big and nasty. Cranky. Um, this this is actually my favorite fight in the entire uh, run. Um, Odegaren's one of my my absolute favorite hunts and one of my most uh, hunted monsters. Uh, it's just such a dance with every weapon. It is a lot of fun. Uh, but this uh, this routing that we're going to be taking is a little out of the way. This is about like, the only time that we that we go out of our way to go for a very specific gathering route. Um, the way that we're going is taking us to an item called a Devil's Blight. A uh, Devil's Blight is a type of mushroom that makes our bombs stronger. So we can upgrade barrel bombs to mega barrel bombs. Uh, this is going to be really important for a uh, for one very specific thing on Zora 2. Nergigante comes back. Oh no, big shocker. <clears throat> but he comes back. And um, when he is there, we are going to try to break one of his horns. That horn break gives us research points that count towards his track gathering yeah. sequence. So instead of having to do his tracks twice, we only have to do them once. It saves a minute um, doing that. So we will try to get that horn break. Um, it's easier said than done, especially with a lot of weapons. But this setup that I have makes it, you know... It makes it it makes it really consistent. Um, it makes it possible. I don't have a script for dual blades, so you know it's just going to be a lot of praying. Um, but I, I more or less know how to do this. Thank you once again for making it an option. <laughs> <laughs> I like listen. I I actually love doing this speed run with other weapons, even though like they we don't have them scripted because it helps us you know find new things. Uh, cause a lot of the time, this, this hits the wall, right? Oh, let's go. This is that, uh, one tenderized attack, by the way. And now that is weakened. So we actually don't need clutch claw boost with that. Uh, watch our positioning here. I need to get him enraged. So I get that roar. Um, Odegaran likes to do a status called bleed. If I get hit by his claws, I'll get the bleed blight. Not ideal in the slightest, um, because every time I dodge, which Dual Blades likes to do, and anytime I use stamina, which is all that Dual Blades does, I lose health. It's brutal, uh, given that Odegaran drops so many good materials for dual blade users. Oh yeah, it's insane. just are nuts they really are the fact that i can chain claggers together just with piercing pods is insane i still haven't seen this his first pod yet though uh but the moment i do this this hunt is over which i'm really surprised i haven't gotten that leg break i did get a tail break though let's go Hi. oh i thought i saw it right there oh hello that was movement I'm not going to take another one because I'm pretty sure it is very close to capture ready. He should be tired right now, too. Oh, my goodness. Look at this shot calling. There it is. And that's the last clagger. Put down the trap. Oh, my goodness. All right, we're good. He's literally about to leave. Please nice. Be good transition. job. <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 like, actually uh, behaved, which is really nice. Uh, and we took a little too long. These Might Seeds respawned, but that's actually okay, because, um, you know, we, we can use those. And then can I make the honey yoink? Oh, no, we're max on honey anyways. It doesn't matter. All right, good. <laughs> this is 
the kind of mistake that I make. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, you know, I'm a, green. You get to talk about the next hunt. Okay. I've been talking a lot. You get to talk. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I've been talking okay. a lot. <laughs> so this one, we're actually not going to do it in the way the game intends us to. Uh, the game intends us to go on this expedition, spot the monster, and then hunt it on that expedition. We're going to spot it, but then we're going to leave. Uh, the reason for that is as soon as we spot the monster, it's going to fly away uh, from its nest. We want to fight it in its nest because there's a waterfall there that we really want to utilize. So we're going to leave and repost the quest so that he spawns back at his nest. And also, a uh, little-known mechanic of the game here, you can ride the wing drakes. I can show you the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Kingdom Hearts games aren't the only ones that we can sing Disney songs during. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that mechanic, we use it rarely, um, but this is like one of the coolest implementations of it, I, and I love it. There's something extremely magical about killing every monster in sight. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, and this is also like a really funny thing, too, is like they programmed in the fact that like you can approach this cutscene from this way by having the handler on this side, but they definitely didn't program it the way that it was intended to because you're supposed to approach from that direction and then it makes you walk all the way up here. Uh, if we come this way, you just get to run. <laughs> That way also lets us gather some extra ivy. Um, it's just like an incredibly convenient uh, way to go. Oh, I never checked to see if I got uh, the extra you large did. bone. So, oh, I did. Okay, cool. Yeah, I never you got two from Radabon. Oh, neat. All right, cool. Yeah, you know, you just shut your brain off and do the speed run. Everything works out. So this is unlocking the delivery for a camp, and this is what we needed that Anjanath pelt and large bones for. This will allow us to repost the quest and start right next to Rathalos. You can yeah, absolutely sit in that expedition and wait for him to fly back to his nest. The issue is he has two flight paths he can take. One does actually save about 10 seconds over the way we're doing it here, but the other one loses a minute, so we just take the consistency. I absolutely love statements like that. Uh, 700 hours in world had no idea about that. Yeah, <laughs> there's. it's so funny. Uh, just like the, the very small things that we do that people are like, wait, <laughs> wait a moment. You just did what? Yeah, I'm being constantly blown away. This is a fantastic experience. Uh, we did have a question in the chat earlier. Somebody was asking if there was like a default weapon that you usually do the run with. Um, so when we're going for world record attempts, uh, Green and I have been kind of changing, uh, exchanging world record recently using switch axe into sword and shield. Um, reason being is that we have almost every fight scripted with both of those weapons, uh, excluding like one or two. Um, it, they are just, they're fast, right? Uh, it's fast, it's easy, um, it's consistent. And so we've been, we've been doing that. Uh, Green currently has the world record and he is, uh, trying to optimize it again by introducing another weapon, a third weapon. Um, so, uh, you know, he, he's making me, he's making me try now. I gotta catch back up. <laughs> I like that the other uh, weapons are faster than dual blades, the fast weapon. <laughs> <laughs> so, all we're gonna do here is just attack. We're gonna try to do a zero transition. Uh which pretty much means that we, we, we don't have him leave this area, but I'm just gonna kind of be quiet and focus on this.
Oh, hi, Toby. Dang it. All right, uh, so that's unfortunate. We got Tobied here, so I have to play very carefully now. Uh, all right, that flashed him. I'm getting bullied by the Toby. So Toby Kadachi is really annoying because he's going to roar out of sync with uh, Rathalos. Not only that, he's just going to attack randomly. And we don't like that. First pod. I'm going to get hit by that. YOLO. All right, good. Nice. That paid off. Uh, I didn't see the second pod there, but I was just kind of going off of like feeling and you know how much damage I dealt. Um, pods don't drop if you hit gray zones. Uh, that's hit zone values that are like under what is it, twenty five? Um, thirty five, I think. Thirty five, yeah, thirty five sounds right. Twenty five sounds low. Um, but hit zone value determines a weak spot versus a non weak spot. Um, so if you see a gray value, it's a non weak spot. If you see an orange value, it's a green spot. I mean, like, uh, or green? What am I saying? <laughs> it's a it's a good spot, a weak spot. Brains <laughs> melting. Two a.m. The game sense right there. We like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> so you went, uh, you but said Toby, really well. and I'm like so I'm so caught up in like Undertale right now. I was like, I don't see a small white dog. <laughs> <laughs> Toby Kadachi. Yes, yes. The other Toby. <laughs> the other Toby. So I saw um, someone mention in chat um, mm -hmm. that the player character can fall from any height and be fine. We actually did do a little um, exploit there. If you fall from that height, normally your character will have a long stagger, but Bagel actually canceled it by attacking midair. We lose no health, right? But yeah, mm -hmm. we can kind of cancel that out. Um... I have one flash pod. Hmm. Yeah, probably would have been smart to go do the extra gathering here and then come and done the quest. But uh, you know what? Nah, we don't need it. Pinky and it'll be fine. He says, looking terrified. <laughs> um. Yeah, having only the one flash pod here is kind of unfortunate. Uh, we do use a lot on Rathalos, and depending on the weapon and just the RNG, you know, you end up having to use more. Um. Oh, careful. All right. Just want to make sure that I had all these things active before I got in here because this is Diablos. Diablos, run at me, please. Thank you. What? When didn't that work? You know what? We're just going to do this. So Diablos is entirely ad lib fight. Um, everything that we do is going to be reactionary to what he does. Whoa. <clears throat> Uh, I know the places that I can stand that are state, uh, safe. I know the places that are not safe. Uh, and fortunately for me, I also know how to dodge this monster really well. I would like to use that thorn pot if I can. Uh, but a lot of this is going to be um, like materials con uh, conservation. Uh, I'm not going to slinger burst this just in case I miss. I'm just going to shoot both those and do that uh the weird thing about uh diablos is that his hit zone is like his his chest and his tail go back there we go it's got to be careful that we don't get ourselves stuck in any animations that we don't want to and look this is this is great Nice. Ideal RNG here is exactly three digs because as long as we have screamer pods, digs are an opening, but we do only have three screamer pods. Ideal RNG is also him just standing still because he does that sometimes, which is really funny. Where's 
kidding about being really good at dodging Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's literally all positioning. This, that's wow. pretty much Monster Hunter. <laughs> all positioning. Yeah. So there's first pod. This is also another thorn pod. And there's the second pod. I'm not going to go. Okay, we're, we got lucky here. I can actually do this. So I wanted to save that uh, that flash pod. Normally I'd flash him here so he can't dig. If he digs, uh, he can break my trap and then I could possibly run out of traps here. Um, that was an amazing Diablos fight. That, was that felt great. really good. That was beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Three digs. Um, I got two trips in there. Uh, the one clagger, like that, that, that was nice. That was a fast, fast hunt. All right. Zora two. Hey green. Can you continue to do the, the talking for me? Uh, absolutely. I love Zora two. <laughs> You know, I'd love to be able to interject here with a few donations, if that's okay. It's, I know we have a oh, lot that's of runs, actually, a lot of uh, hunts lined up really quickly, but yeah, we've got this is some a good exciting spot. donations here. So, first of all, I want to say uh, Nightflyer oh, sent yeah. in two hundred fifty dollars. So thank you so much for your wow. generosity, Nightflyer. Awesome. Matt, you struggle sent in twenty five dollars and said, "I need to find out what ultimate." Puff Puff is. Thank you so much. <laughs> and in fact, our our incentive that we're looking to unlock, we are making good progress. We're looking for $750 to unlock the Dragon Quest XI Ultimate Puff Puff. Now we are sitting at $316 out of the $750. So almost halfway there. Y'all are doing an amazing job. Please do get those donations. And, and then finally, My Hero Zero sent in a, a very exciting donation of $12 with a comment $28,000, and that is correct. We have just hit $28,000 raised for NAMI. Absolutely amazing. Let's go. Y'all are being incredible with your generosity here, and I would just love to say keep it up because we have so many incentives we still need to unlock, including that ultimate puff puff if y'all want that spicy content you got to get those donations in also the dragon quest 11 say no to jade we're looking for 500 dollars. we have zero donations towards that one and dragon quest 11 slay the sewer black dragon we only have 152 dollars. we're looking for 500 dollars. all of these are for the game directly after this one so please do get your donations to the national alliance on mental illness thank you so much Oh, I, I, I just, I can't stress it enough. I need to know what ultimate puff puff is. I'm just saying. So if you guys can do it, <laughs> I know, that'd be I really, amazing. I really want to see it. I, I... <laughs> please, please, friends. All right, Green, can you give us a rundown of, of Snora Napteros 2? Of course. So like we mentioned before, this quest has a health gate that we actually to deal with. Um, and also, like before, we don't want to break the cores. So we're going to do as much damage as possible to the cores without actually breaking them. But in addition to that, we are on a timer. There are several animations he's going to do in his walking path, and he happens to do those animations while under environmental trap. So we are going to use those environmental traps to cancel his animations and get some damage off in the process. No! Stop hitting me! Well, Stop he is it! not being nice to you today. <laughs> uh, this quest can absolutely kill you. Uh, especially yes. going in with not enough health into the next courtroom uh, because it's very small and very scary. Uh, I actually have no idea how much damage the full DB uh, dual blades combo does, so I'm just kind of winging it. You got this. I believe. All right, so there's the there's the first kind of trigger that we have to meet. Um, I'm shooting these these uh, cores with a stone when I land down here to uh, 
to bait out that explosion so I can position myself to make sure that I don't get hit by it. Turn that off, wait for the next one. Ooh, we get the bad one. All right, uh, let's find that spot. There's one safety spot in here. Hey, he found it. <laughs> That's got to be like 150 or something, right? Probably. Oh, oh, nope, it's more than that. All right, so I can do three of those. <laughs> Maybe four. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so like we were talking about, breaking cores is kind of bad because it, um, it stops him from moving. So we're going to lose a few seconds there, but I was actually kind of in a good uh, RNG spot. I don't think we got a big flinch out of him. He might have been in an animation where he couldn't, um, where he couldn't be flinched. So we might have gotten really lucky there. Yeah. Yeah, because he actually didn't stop, huh? Hmm. All right, Green, pull out the notepad and stopwatch. <laughs> so this is the most important rock drop to hit. Uh, Zora's going to start charging up here. If we don't stop it with the rock, uh, first off, he'll do a big explosion that will kill us. Um, second, it will make his cores explode much more frequently. And third, the lava he spews from the top of his volcano thing uh, has a larger hitbox and does more damage. So we just don't like that, so we're just not going to let him do it. Oh, don't get hit by that! Oh my goodness. He really does not like me today. So this next rock, we technically could drop now, but we're actually waiting until Zora stops moving in a second here. If we drop it now, it will flinch him, which is a time loss, so we're just going to wait. I really love that the mechanic in this game, when you get set on fire to put the fire out, is to stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> just like real life. Teaching us good life skills. But I didn't get sniped by a lava this time. Alright, so I mentioned before that these Mega Barrel Bombs are going to be used against Nergi. Um, they are bombs that are stronger than normal bombs. What this is going to do is help us cue a part break against Nergi on his head. It needs The explosion needs to happen on his head, though. Um, the nice thing about this is, is that it will uh, you know, set that up really, really well. I need good AI here for him to jump, and that makes this significantly easier. Um, I can use my positioning and how I move here and how I'm facing to bait that AI, and I don't get it, so I have to shoot these manually. Um, if he got any closer to that, I miss, but now we are good to go, and now I can break these uh, horns. I should just be able to activate Demon Dance. And we got it. Nice. There it is. All right, he's going to go for the mythical <laughs> zero transition Nergi. There's no way I get this, but. Whoa! All right, we're good. He's doing it, gamer. Or oh, is standing up now. Uh, there is a mythical trick we've been trying to find a way to do in single player. Uh, if you manage to do 30% of Nergigante's health before you get that voice line that Zora has broken loose, Zora actually won't stand up here and he'll just start moving again almost immediately, saving about a minute, but it's absurdly difficult. So... Zora won't stand up. Yep, so we'll good. just keep going. Uh, so this rock, um, we lovingly refer to him as Rock Friend. When Zora's standing like this, it just doesn't break. So we're just going to keep hitting it this entire time for free damage. It's free real estate. It's literally exactly. free real estate. Let's see if I can get an extra one in. Nope, I didn't get it. Whee! Ooh. All right, well, we're good. Fancy. Uh, I've already done two or three to this. You've done a lot to this. I'm gonna leave that one alone. <laughs> 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 All 
I got lucky with breaking one of these so far. I don't want to do it again. Uh, this next uh, we card, have a we lot actually will break, though. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to line up the part break. I'm going to do three combos and then save the fourth one for when he's transitioning. It's kind of weird to set up, though, because it's going to be doing an explosion while also it's transitioning. So actually setting that up is, is really, really awkward. Um, I also want to get caught by um, an out-of-bounds trigger. Um, think of it as like an out of bounds warp. Um, I should actually probably start damaging this thing, huh? Oh, yeah, of course he does that. All right, neat. All right, now we go back in. Um, but I'm going to get hit by an out of bounds trigger to position myself on the barrier in the next phase. Um,. Oh wow, that went a lot faster than the last one. Oh hey, did you know you can dodge the attacks, guys? The handler's letting us know now, uh, what, an hour and a half? Uh, uh, almost two hours into the run? She's so useful throughout this entire game. Oh boy, is she <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting really bad RNG with these uh, explosions. I'm getting the big explosion, which is just not ideal. Uh, so but now, now I can break started. the core. <laughs> there we go. Good break. Beautiful. And good transition. Oh, bad transition. Hello, bad. Nani? What? Huh? It's okay. Eh, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, that should have not have put me over there, but maybe my position was a little off, a little wrong, and just uh, I got hit by the normal transition. But that's fine. Um, I know how to recover from this kind of... So Zora does have to actually reach the barrier for the quest to end, so we don't want to flinch him before he gets there. So we will wait to do most of the damage in this phase, but shooting that cannon right then will not flinch him. But any other damage in this phase, we'll wait until he gets to the barrier and the barrier's health bar appears. Might be a little late to the Dragonator, but that's fine. I love how chat is really caught up talking about the handler right now. Uh, I would like to say the handler is a bottomless pit. Um, I don't know how. <laughs> He's always hungry. Like, always. Y'all, I relate to that, though. Never stops talking about eating everything in sight, basically. Where's my Dragonator? Right here. <laughs> we found it. All right, so I was a little late to that uh, to the Dragonator, but that's fine. Uh, we have to wait for the barrier defense to pop up. I don't know if Green said that. I think he did. Um, but now we're going to lay into this. Uh, we're looking for a voice line that tells us that the quest is over so we can stop loading these. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to quite get it. Yeah, we have two more cannons to do. That's about what we expect um, with a weapon that isn't like sword and shield or switch axe, one that's scripted out. Why are you going, friend? No one ever asks, how is the dragon eater? <laughs> <laughs> we ask, where is the dragon eater? Okay, cool. That was only uh, five cannon. Neat. Nice. 10.35 uh, is not a bad time. A little slow, but yeah. Not at good. all. It's... What did I get the other day? The first sub 10 that we had on that? 12.57? Uh, 12 <laughs> uh, 9.57, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Brain, operate, move faster. We're, we're figuring it out. All right, so Zora 2 gives us a commendation, which is the next item that we need to do an upgrade here. So we get to upgrade our weapon again. Big upgrade. Yes. I love everybody's talking about the Meowskular Chef right now. I love the Meowskular Chef. <laughs> we haven't really gotten to see the Meowskular Chef. No, yes, we we never we, will. We never do. <laughs> so small little damage optimization here, buying a power charm. Uh, just having that in our inventory means we do a little bit more damage, and we are going to go fight a Pookie Pookie. Um, so this is high rank. Uh, that Zora Two fight is uh, the ending to the partial category, uh, partial hundred percent category one, uh, a colossal task, also known as Zora Two. Um, now that. We're into, now that we're past that, we are into high rank. Um, high rank 
some things change, but most most importantly, um, you know, we've only got like what five, six, seven, eight, nine hunts left. So we're 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 round. This is this is the home stretch. Um, the unfortunate thing is that we will have to do track gathering here soon, but it goes by really fast. It's also a great time for uh, for for more donations and incentives. Um, so that's coming up. Woo! Uh, but this word. fight, <laughs> yeah, this fight is uh, this fight goes by really fast, um, and it, it introduces introduces us to track gathering. Um, this is when it's forced on us. Uh, we now have to gather question mark question mark question mark Rathian tracks. All right, Pookie is going to be lowered, uh, lured over to that, and we are going to uh, start this off with a wall bang. That wall bang is going to get him into an enraged state when he stands up. Uh, we just kind of use this as our first mode of CC against him with control. One, two, and got the head. Nice. Uh -uh. That's a good clagger because that gets me this pod here, which I believe is a oh no, it's a thorn. That's actually perfectly fine for this. Stop moving. It's something I say to monsters endlessly while playing this game. Stop Very nice KOs with the Thorn Pod. Oh, I really want to YOLO it, but I'm not going to. Alright, that's actually a really good clagger off of that last pod drop. Nice. That's actually going really well. Better than some of my other runs recently. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we gathered uh, 60 points towards the question mark, question mark, question mark, Rathian. Um, <clears throat> we need to gather 400 in total. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, knowing, uh, these, these next two hunts that we're going to go on, uh, one's an expedition and, and one's an optional quest. Um, we're going to be going on these to set up, uh, the pinky and tracks in the wild spire waste. Uh, depending on, uh, which pattern will depend on how we route through these. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like ad lib. Uh, but the nice thing is, is a minimum of uh, 150 points and a maximum of 200 points. Uh, we only need 300, though, uh, because when we go and fight high rank Anjanath, we will get at least 40 from fighting him. So we've already got 60. We'll get 40. That's 100 minus 400, 300 points. Man, we got to do math in this speed run. Ugh. At least we can skip the cutscenes now. <laughs> so... Uh, every time I come into this area from Camp 1, I will be looking out uh, right in front of me, right where these little pilot hairs are sitting, and looking for tracks here. If there's no tracks, then I'm on pattern A or B. Then I'm going to slide down right here, and if there's tracks right here, which there aren't, uh, I'm on pattern B. But there aren't. I'm on pattern A. A is unfortunately the slowest pattern, but it's also the pattern that has the most uh, tracks on it. So we can actually kind of salvage this a little bit on the second visit. If we get a pattern that is a little bit faster, we actually only need to gather... Um, 10 tracks instead of 15 or, you know, whatever else is left over. Um, ideally, we would get like two pattern Bs in a row. Um, those have 180 each. So we grab 180 and then we grab 12 and then we're done. And they're all very close to um, to camp one. <clears throat> but here we're just going to grab um, our our uh, two 200 points. Uh, and then we'll we'll reset the quest. Um. Now is a great time, a fantastic time for, for donations. Fabulous. I have all kinds of donations here. 
We have an anonymous donation for $25. No comment, just generosity. Thank you so much for your donation. We have a second donation from anonymous. Perhaps a different anonymous, perhaps the same anonymous. Mm. We'll never know. But it was for $100. And they say Monster Hunter is my favorite game franchise. And you're raising funds for a great cause. That we are. Thank you so much. Finally, we have another donation here from the Axe Man who sends in $30 and says, During this stuck at home period, I sort of got my son the Hatchet Boy hooked on RPGs. One of the first that really stuck with him was Dragon Quest XI, donating to name the hero after him. And that is a bid war I have not been talking about, but we do have a bid war open to name the main character in Dragon Quest XI, the game coming up immediately after this one. And Hatchet Boy is now in the lead at $30. Speaking of things that you can donate towards, y'all are doing an amazing job working our way towards unlocking that Dragon Quest XI Ultimate Puff Puff Incentive, which I just, I really want to see it. We're looking for $750 and we're sitting at $416. So y'all are doing fantastic. Keep it up. I would love to see that unlocked before the end of this run. Of course, we do have other incentives for Dragon Quest XI, including the Say No to Jade incentive. We are looking for $500 for that one, and we have $0. And finally, the Dragon Quest XI Slay the Sewer Black Dragon incentive. We're looking for $500 for that one, too, and we are sitting at $177. So y'all have been amazing with your generosity, and I urge you to donate if you can Remember, it is for a wonderful, wonderful cause here. We are here supporting NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization, whose work is focused around three pillars, education and support, awareness, and advocacy. What does that mean? Via their 48 state offices and more than 650 affiliates, NAMI offers a host of signature programs, presentations, and support groups that are available free of charge. This includes a national helpline that can provide information, resources, and a compassionate, understanding, trained volunteer to support anyone who calls in. These programs reach more than 300,000 people a year and are life-changing opportunities for education, connection, support, and personal growth. All of your donations will go directly to NAMI, and they want you to know that you are not alone. All right. This is one of the more difficult fights in this run, especially with weapons that are not scripted. This is High Rank Anjanath. Um, so you saw how we kind of, uh, I'm going to say, the, dealt with Anjanath the first time around. N now he has more health, he deals more damage, and he is much more angry. Um, so we're going to be using two pitfall... Uh, I, I can talk. I know I can. We're going to be using two pitfall traps. There we go. Enunciate. Uh, in this hunt to make this a little bit more manageable. Um, another thing that I'm going to be doing is tenderizing a leg to get a uh, to get a topple that way. Oh, it looks like we got the slow spawn, but that's okay. We ate here, so it's manageable. Uh, but we're first going to put down this uh, pitfall trap here, lure him over. Idiot falls right into it. And this nice tenderize off on the head. Ugh, so stylish. Oh, I didn't get the uh, iframe there. Oh, well. But I did get that clagger. Gonna run up to it. I'll have to get a second hit off on this leg, and I'm gonna try to use these uh, bomb pods to do it. That's unfortunate movement there. to get hit by that that's kind of expected he does a lot of these hip check moves which are not fun to deal with this ledge is also the worst ledge in the entire game because he just does this against it uh this is hothead hothead has a really cool mechanic to it if i do enough damage to the hothead he will uh topple the other thing about hothead though is that he will always be like dealing little little bouts of damage at the end of every 
like attack. Uh, might be able to get this in, but he, of course, flinched all the way over there. Flip the head, nice. You know, craft that pitfall because we're about to use it. Uh, I'm gonna play safe here actually uh, and heal up because he can just like one shot me right now, and I'm not about that. I was Ouch. watching that fire damage, like, oh! Yeah, it's fine. I'm trying to remember which leg it was, I'm pretty sure it was this one. Hey, he remembered! Let's go. <laughs> Not a great roar, um, but we should be able to get this part break. There we go. I'm also not in a great place. We are now in what's called a transition zone. Always are bad because of this. A little late to that. Got very lucky. I get in front of him. I'm going greedy. <laughs> it never fails. Okay. Greed okay. literally never fails. Yeah, speaking of greed, I don't like how you how used to your greed I've gotten. Like Ferratic said, <laughs> I noticed the health and it was low, and I was like, oh, that that's not low for him. That's normal <laughs> for me. <laughs> I've seen him just wailing away with, like, a pixel of health. There I was like, times... oh, please don't, oh, please. <laughs> there have been times where I've been poisoned by, like, Pookie Pookie or something, and I am uh, more or less uh, trying to capture the Pookie before poison will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love the conversation that's going on in the chat. Everybody's talking about favorite pet names for uh, monsters. I, of course, enjoy the giant pickle myself, the angry pickle. Big beagle. Himkle. <laughs> I have not heard the pet name Jay Leno. <laughs> oh, for Ergan? Is that, is that what monster is? <laughs> Uh, what am I doing? I'm going to the wrong place. I'm too busy thinking about Jay Leno now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, so this quest is weird. Um, this is our this is our first uh, quest that simulates a uh, a mechanic in the game called Drunk Bird. Uh, Drunk Bird is this really cool thing that uh, when you start a quest in high rank, you have a chance to be dropped off in front of the monster. We can completely negate that that effect uh, by leaving from a camp. However, um, this one will always simulate that effect, so we have to, uh, if we want to eat, which we do, because eating is really good and, and saves us a lot of heartache, um, we go on an expedition first, preload pre the area, and then go on this quest. And then it simulates this drunk bird by landing us in this area. Now, I am incredibly scared of this fight because I have zero flash pods, and this monster loves to fly. Um, so now I kind of have to, uh, well, deal with not having that. Oh, yeah, no, that's exactly where I hit game. See if I get lucky here. No, I got the wings again. Careful here. So I'm trying to get it into an enraged state. Uh, I can do that by doing another wall bang here. 
read. Um, <laughs> please clip into the leg. Nope, I got the tail. All right, whatever. And I got bombed. Let's go. This is all one of the reasons why we're leaving here. Uh, Gajalakas, those little red dudes are awful. Um, we're just going to leave. They really are. They're so annoying. Let me jump off of this, please. Thank you. Now, if I had a flash here, I would be doing that. But what I'm just going to do instead is just get ready to beat up its head. Oh, my goodness. It's time. Please. Oh. Oh. So that leg tenderize is really nice. What angle? Uh, that leg tenderize will help me get more trips on the monster, which are really important for making it not move. Especially considering I don't have... Which way are you facing? All right, we're good. <laughs> no. Move, move. Uh, but this is one of the worst just instances of monster runnies you know your tail's coming off this is this belongs to me now thanks yeah nice call <laughs> no It's just always so scary because the entire monster's body is a hitbox and runnies don't put you into riser iframes, um, which is kind of like this this uh, moment of invulnerability. We just don't get that here. Good to know that the noises that people make while hunting these monsters are universal. Like you and I make the same kind of noise. Oh yeah, no. I mean, what what else? What other noise are you gonna make? No. Please, ma'am. All right, good. Man, I'm getting really lucky with this AI, especially not having flash pods. Can I have this AI, please. Absolutely not. But, but. All right, that's my last pod. Ma'am, no. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. That was super greedy. Uh, if that tail flip got, uh, went off, I died. Just by the way. <laughs> I was 100% standing in the way of it. Uh, so it would have 100% kill me. All right, neat. We no longer need traps. That was the last monster to trap. We are done with traps. Uh, now we Ooh. deal with elder dragons. Oh, no trapping them. Yep. Try as you might. Uh, flight? Oh, protection. Oh, the game's telling me something. <laughs> that is a level of divine blessing. Which we already have two levels of. So we're actually going right. to do a minor sequence break here. Uh, the game does want us to head to the Elder's Recess, but we're actually going to gather all the Elder Tracks we need first. I wanted to ask if, if elemental damage ever becomes a thing at any point during this run. Do you try to switch that up? or? Um, so, because defender gear and defender weapons exist, uh, no. Yeah, I was <laughs> we just, say, we like, just stick with like these. like you just do the whole thing with the defender, but... Yeah. Um, they're the best weapons for the game. If we were playing, however, no add-ons, depending on the weapon uh, and RNG, we would try to get those. But even in no add-ons, you're more or more likely going to do um, uh, just a raw weapon like bone. Um, yeah. The bone weapons are the easiest ones to set up on. But depending on the weapon, you know that's going to change. All right, so. This sequence break, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing we're doing uh, Elder Tracks out of order. Um, the game expects you to go to the uh, Elder's Recess and do your Gigante Tracks first, um, but it, it lets you start doing all of the Elder Dragon Tracks now. 
The nice thing about Elder Dragon tracks, unlike Pink Rathian, is that uh, all of the tracks are the same number on them, uh, uh, same number of tracks. And um, instead of 400 points, we only need 200 points. Um, every pattern will have 200 points on it. Thank goodness. There was a time before Iceborne, before Defender Gear, before Clutch Claw and Slinger Burst and uh, Worm Stake Blast on Gunlance that um, we would have to do multiple visits for each of these monsters because there was maybe 8 to 12 tracks per pattern. It was awful. Some of you may have heard of a game called A Hat in Time. Um, my friend would race me um, who could finish what faster? Could I finish Elder Tracks before he could finish an any percent in a hat in time? Um, <laughs> and he would always win because it took me roughly like 45 minutes to do track gathering. Um, oh. And that run for him was just under 40. So <clears throat> now though, uh, Capcom realized the error in their ways, added more tracks to every pattern. Um, for all the monsters. And so now we have at least 200 points on every single pattern. Um, we've routed it in a way that we know, you know, the moment we land where we're gonna go. So at the very beginning, when I landed in uh, Camp 17, I saw some uh, blue scout flies. That tells me I'm on pattern C immediately. I fly back down to uh, Camp 11 and I do it from there. If uh, I didn't see those, uh, patterns A and B start from uh, Camp 17, so. Uh, that's kind of like why we go there. It might have been weird, like, oh, did he accidentally go to Camp 17? Uh, no, it's just how that, that route starts. <clears throat> um, but each of these, like Pink Rathian, um, there are there are three patterns per monster, um, and we're just kind of, like, figuring it out as we start. So this is a pattern C. This is, unfortunately, a slow one. Um, is what it is, right? You can't really do anything about this. I've lost a lot of uh, world record pace runs to tracks recently. Uh, the game hates me, plain and simple. <laughs> so I, I, I lose runs here all the time because uh, Green, what's the difference between the fastest uh, patterns and the slowest patterns? Uh, one minute and 40 seconds. Oh my gosh. It's not a negligible amount of time, especially when the distance that separates Green and I right now is a minute and 15 or a minute and 20. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there's really there's really not much time left in this game. Because um, a, a lot of... Uh, what's really weird is like a lot of our time saves are, you know, RNG-based. Um, even outside of just uh, track gathering. Like, all of Colossal Task is pretty much RNG. So, like, having a good Diablos fight can be plus or minus a minute. <clears throat> this game is... Uh, now, at least, a lot more consistent, you know, with Defender Gear and with the tracks, how they are now. Um, I'm really surprised. Oh, no, nope, there he is. I was about to say, I was like, I'm really surprised <laughs> we haven't seen an invader yet. So, hey, look, it's Bagel Goose. <laughs> <laughs> I heard all, I saw all kinds of nicknames in the chat, and I was like, which one are we going with? Which one are we going with? <laughs> I, I love, I, I, I hate this monster as a fight, but I love its design. Um, I, I, like, dislike blast mechanics so much. Say his um, name three luckily. times. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> What's really funny too is I, I, so I have chat open too, so I can read it. And uh, I don't know if like anyone else has done this, but you can set like custom, you know, uh, uh, mention names for yourself. So one of my mentions is Bagel. So I just see a bunch of red messages right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, that's good. Yep, 250. I'm also using, like, the research points to figure out if I've gathered the right number. You can also check in quests, but, like, you know. I trust myself. Ooh, A or B. This is good. This is a good pattern. Um, I needed this, too, because I needed uh, flash pods here. All right, so we're still track gathering, right? How about some donations? How do we feel about that? Oh, yeah, go for it. All right. Shazar sent in... $50 and says Monster Hunter World and Dragon Quest XI are two of my favorite games of all time. Let's get that ultimate puff puff. And we have another donation here from Big Daryl 86 in and $25 and says, so I got a kick out of the Jay Leno thing. That's worth tossing another donation into the pot. I've been enjoying the Monster Hunter World run. Even though I've never really been into playing the games, watching is very entertaining. Good luck and thanks for doing this awesome event. Thank you, Big Daryl 86. 
Finally, I have one more donation here, an anonymous donation for $5 without comment. Thank you so much. I want to remind everybody that every donation counts, large or small. I happen to have been watching the donation totals, and I know that one went towards our Dragon Quest 11 Ultimate Puff Puff. Now we are up to $471 out of the $750 we're looking for. We're more than halfway there. We need, let's see, well, we don't need a whole lot more. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> math on the fly. No, brain's not going to do it. We need less than $300. <laughs> I know that. So please, please continue to get those donations in. I really want to see the ultimate puff puff. How much longer would you say we have in this run here, Jal Bagel, if you were just to, ooh, to guess? Ooh, an hour? An hour. Y'all have an hour to raise less than $300 so we can see that ultimate puff puff. Please, oh please, do it for me. <laughs> do it for Jal Bagel, because I know it's Jal, it's runner's choice as well. Do it for yourself. Oh my gosh, is it pickle time? Am I missing the yeah, pickle? He's, oh, he's right here. Angry pickle time. I went a little bit further so you could see him. <laughs> the run has been blessed by both invaders. That that we doesn't happen actually, a lot. We aren't actually fighting the angry pickle, we're just waving. Yep, we're just saying hi to him. That's pretty much it. That monster is so angry. All right. This is Green's favorite part of the speed run. I, <laughs> that's that's all I got. <laughs> Downy. It's, There's it's been a awful. mention of the Downy Crake, my nemesis. Oh. Do not. Do not <laughs> mention the Downy Crake. Downy <laughs> Crake is cursed energy. It took me so long. <laughs> it took me so many tries. But look, I wanted to say... I would love to see a $5 donation train start up for us to unlock that ultimate puff buff. That first anonymous donation of $5, let it be the first of many. I hope that you can afford $5 to help out the National Alliance on Mental Illness today. And that we can see the ultimate puff buff. Thank you. Alright, so Green, so tell here? us about Elder's Recess. So here we're gonna do... No. Uh, Oh, <laughs> too soon. So, so this is it. similar to what we did at the beginning of the run with the field team leader, getting out of the walking range in order to sprint off a ledge and get past the admiral. Uh, then we're just going to do a quick run, and then we'll get into recess proper. You could usually run off that edge a little bit quicker. It's something that we found recently, so I'm still practicing it. Uh, saves about 10 seconds, maybe more, uh, but I messed it up a little bit. I went a little too soon. Also didn't hug the wall that well. Yeah. So in the Elder's Recess, there's a few things we need to do. There are three monsters we need to sight, and each monster has two Nergigante spikes we need to gather at its location. So we've routed this in a very cool way to make that gathering as efficient as possible. Nice, text clear. Very nice. So to start out, Bagel is actually going to equip his ghillie mantle here because the first monster we're going to run into is Uragon. And Uragon, as soon as his cutscene ends, he will roar, which will stagger us. Uh, we don't want that Jay to happen. Leno. Uh, yeah, sorry. Right, didn't we establish that, Jay Leno? <laughs> <laughs> so this cutscene will actually not ready. <laughs> this cutscene will deactivate the ghillie mantle and force Bagel to unequip it. The thing about that is he can actually move during that animation, which will allow him to walk out of range of that roar. If he didn't have the ghillie mantle equipped, he would be in that kind of shocked, oh my god, a new monster state, and wouldn't actually be able to move in time. Uh, next is Dodogama. He has two spikes here, one on the left side of the room, one on the right. Uh, we head to the one on the right and gather that first, because the cutscene has a set ending location, which happens to be right next to the spikes on the left. And the cutscene refreshes our ghillie, so we can just completely ignore Dodo here. Bagel, don't do it. God. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Every time. Don't do it. Does it. Does it immediately. <laughs> I keep thinking about a making cat? that a donation you... incentive. Just stare directly. <laughs> <laughs> stare 
you're directly at green, do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the reason we actually do recess last. Um, we used to do recess before the other tracks, but that would require us to open our map here to head to another location. Uh, now we can just buffer this return from expedition button, which lets us skip filling the map in from all the new sections we just discovered. Couple seconds time tracks. save. Uh, about six, I think. <clears throat> um, so the next hunt is Nergigante. <laughs> um, Once again. Nergi is something. Our friend, Nergigante. Our friend. This is the third time we've seen him. Leave us alone, <laughs> you angry hedgehog, you. <laughs> um, so Nergigante is interesting. He has an interesting mechanic. Um, all other dragons actually have this. They have what's called Elder's Aura. Um, Nergigante's is unique because uh, it is tied to his spikes that grow on him. Um, his aura is entirely based on these spikes. Uh, there are three states of spikes, no spikes, white spikes, and black spikes. Um, no spikes have a good hit zone. White spikes have a great hit zone. Um, black spikes have the worst hit zone. Um, so we want to be hitting no spikes and white spikes. We don't want the, uh, we don't want Nergi to, to make black spikes. And the way that that happens is, is not breaking white spikes. How many more times can I say the word spikes? Um, we're going to be breaking them though. And every time that we break one, we will get a topple animation. That is just how we're going to be doing this fight, is just sniping out those white spike breaks and getting topples off of them. <clears throat> um, the problem about that is, is that I'm going to be trying to bait out certain AI to do that too. And baiting that AI is always really dangerous because if I position just a little too close, I get hit by it. It does half my health. I cry a lot and then I get carded and it's not fun for anyone. Um, but this has a cool opener, uh, especially with light weapons. Light weapons can do this this really neat opener. Um, it's uh, two wall bangs into a KO, um, and it also lets us tenderize the head, uh, and that gets us set up to drop two uh, crystal rocks on it, which subsequently lets us do about 20% of his health, uh, sometimes more. Um, all in all, this opener will do roughly like 35%. Um, and if we get really lucky, we can do even more off of a couple of claggers and maybe some head topples. Uh, but at a minimum, we'll do about 35%. After that, it's going to be a lot of ad lib uh, and just paying attention to the monster. Um, so we're going to give it a shot. All right, that was more than 30%, and that was more than my normal opener against it. Uh, two KOs and a, and a trip and a clagger is amazing. Oh, I thought I missed. <laughs> I'm gonna get 
get hit by this because I didn't have stamina. A lot of mistakes that new players will make against Nergi is getting up immediately after getting hit. Oh my goodness. Spikes. Be very careful here. Spikes. Oh, they both turned to black spikes. Not ideal. So Bagel just cancelled a health-based roar, means he's somewhere between 50 and 30 percent. Be careful here. So flinching him here should reset his AI back to this area. Good, I caught it just in time. Uh, that's actually really good for me. Uh, this is Dive Bomb. That's Max Aura. When he gets too many black spikes, he does that. Uh, that also gets rid of all the black spikes. I want to stop that. That is a Slinger Burst iframe. That looks very strange. And I get hit! <laughs> <laughs> I said be very careful here because another hit will probably do me in not well. Uh, and then I don't know if this is actually going to reset him here. Yeah, it's not going to. Uh, luckily, uh, he's going to stop in the next area. Um, I'm just trying to get the part break on the head or a KO on the head. Um, I got a really good... Uh, thorn hit on the head earlier, so I should be pretty close to that. Oh man, that flinch kind of sucks. And that just really, all of that really sucks. So the flinch ate the, uh, the horn break there, which is unfortunate. Gonna go for a mount here, it's just safe. Mounts I usually don't go for because they are slow. Um, yeah, okay. He is resistant to it now. So I just have to do a really slow mount here. It's unfortunate, but it's going to stop him from transitioning, and I should be able to kill him here. Nice. All right, good. He's done. Um, just kind of take time losses to stop him from transitioning further. If he went to the next area here, he would just keep going until he got to his uh, nest. And fighting Nergi in his nest is awful um, for some reason. It's just how they designed this game. When he's in his nest, his uh, black spikes grow the fastest. Um, his black spikes also grow faster just when he's at lower HP. Um, so he will just immediately get black spikes once he gets there. It is one of the most awful experiences. If you've ever played this game and you've tried to fight him there, it's it's just, it's terrible. Uh, but we are coming up to the last kind of like boss rush. So I would say now is a fantastic time for for donations and incentives and stuff like that. We're just gonna be doing some movement around um, hub that we really don't need to talk about, so. Wonderful. Well, I have a $5 donation here from the Axeman who says, I remember doing this as I played through with the Hatchet Boy. I forget how I explained the concept of Puff Puff, though. And of course, that donation <laughs> went towards that Puff Puff incentive, the Dragon Quest XI Ultimate Puff Puff. We so desperately would love to unlock. 
before the end of this run. We are now sitting at $526 out of the $750 you're looking for. Y'all are making amazing progress. Speaking of which, Elia, I hope I said your name right, sent in $50 and says, bullying the Dodogama is always required. Good luck on the run, John Bagel. That one definitely also went towards that ultimate puff puff. Y'all are doing such a fantastic job. I would love to see us unlock this. We're looking for $750. We're sitting at $526. The donations just keep coming in. I'm really happy about it. But you know, it's not going to happen unless you do your part. So every donation, no matter how large or how small counts, please do get those donations in. And a reminder that we do have other incentives open for that Dragon Quest Eleven run, including the Say No to Jade incentive. We have zero out of $500. And the Dragon Quest Eleven Slay the Sewer Black Dragon. Looking for $500 for that one. And we have $177. Just a little reminder that we were having some problems getting donations earlier that uh, PayPal was not cooperating, but it is definitely cooperating now. So if you were not able to donate earlier, now is a fantastic time. Are we doing to have more time to talk about oh, all you have things? You have so much time. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. All right, all right. Well, I do want to remind everybody that when you donate, if you hit the minimums, you'll be entered to win various prizes. Right now, what we have available for a $15 minimum donation is a Dragon Quest Slime Family 3D Shadow Box. I'm sure this thing looks absolutely fantastic. If you want to take a look at it, you just need to type exclamation point donate, or sorry, exclamation point prizes in chat, pardon me, and you can take a look at it your very own self. That was, in fact, donated by the RPG Limit Break staff. So thank you so much. We also have available a Super Nintendo. A Super Nintendo with a component video mod. You'll be entered into the drawing to win that for a minimum donation of $25. I do believe it's cumulative. So if you manage to get up to that, you'll be entered in. But it has to be within the time frame. So you'll want to get those donations in quickly if that's something that you are interested in. And that particular prize was donated by P Diggity Dog. Thank you so much, P Diggity Dog. P Diggity Dog would like you to know that um, commissions. Oh, my apologies. It's not cumulative. It's a, it's a single donation. So um, you'll have to donate twenty-five dollars or more to be entered into a chance to win that Super Nintendo with a component video mod. Now, P Diggity Dog, commissions are open for console mods and refurbishing. So if you're interested in that, you can look them up on twitter.com at P Diggity Dog or on facebook.com at P Diggity Dog. That's P-D-I-G-G-I-T-Y-D-O-G-G. -G -G. All right. So this is the second of our um elder dragon uh boss rush right we got five of these to get through and this is this is the second of those five this is kushala daura um also known as wimdy it heckin wimdy um i this fight is something um he has an aura uh he has an elder aura about him that creates a a area of of wind effect around him that can push you around cancel your attacks it's just not fun to deal with um on top of that he likes to fly a bunch uh, but the great thing is is that he is always susceptible to flash bugs um i have so many right now it is actually amazing i'm gonna be waiting to to wall bang here for just a safe opening he's doing the thing where he just doesn't like to look at me come on mirame look at me kid That'll work. Take a little bit of a chip damage there, but it's okay. So that's a thorn pod that we just used on him, and we're going to use that to get a KO, uh, or at least start one. I should have grabbed on. I will have enough time. I will not have enough time, because I didn't get the flash head flinch. Uh, this is fine. I'll be able to get it off of this. Get on the ground! Uh, a lot of this fight is taking advantage of that and just not getting hit. Um, but if we were playing with much better, stronger, faster weapons, uh, we'd do a full lock against him. Oh, no, he moved.
He is, like, giving me the worst positioning possible by, like, standing in ledges and on ledges. A lot of this is just going to be stamina management and making sure I have good positioning so I can get good hits on the head. Um, he has a very interesting roar. He has short roars and fast roar, uh, short roars and long roars. The short roars, if we get hit by one, he can follow it up with pretty much any attack and it will always hit. Um, we can't do anything about dodging. Good old Windora. And I get hit because of that. This is a tornado. It does exactly what you think it does. We want to get away from it. Yeah, the lucky thing is, is that uh, a lot of his attacks, he can, like, every every one of his attacks, he can be flashed out of. Um, so we'll just always take advantage of that. One of the tightest roars in the game to dodge. He's attacking directly into a wall, which is my least favorite thing for him to be doing. Um, ideally, we would get... Uh, you know, head knockdowns and stuff on him, but that's just kind of hard to do with a weapon like Dual Blades, where it's very easy to overwrite thresholds. Uh, but I'm going to be trying to snipe the head every now and then when I can, and then just baiting out AI to get him where I want. Down the ground. Fifty percent health. I can tell by that uh, audio. We manage our stamina here. Ooh, that's not great. Move. I need to get him out of that tornado, so I'm going to try to bait his AI this way. And now baiting AI is done by a couple different, uh, done a couple different ways. Um, your position towards a monster, uh, how far away you are from a monster, um, whether you're moving or not, a lot of different things can uh, determine AI. I haven't got a single head knocked down yet. That's so unfortunate. Hey, look, a head knocked hey. down. All you had to do was mention it. There we go. For real, though. Let's go. Head, thank you. No, I just missed that one. So that's a long roar, so I should be okay here. Oh, and then a Diagro roar. Um, with any luck, he will go to the slope area down here. Oh, actually, I don't want him to go there. Where do I want you to go? Hey, he's going to go to the slope area. So I'm... <laughs> All right, so this fight is... Now, infinitely more annoying. With uh, dual blades, my main way to attack him is with the uh, dash opening with this attack. But since I'm on a slope now, it's going to make it a lot more harder to use this because I will go into a sliding animation. That actually worked out really well. It looks so cool. Uh. <laughs> that actually worked well against him. All right, cool. We're going to do that a bunch. How about that? I'm that saying. seems fun. No, don't get hit by that. Thank you. Don't get hit by that either. Oh, high framing is so much fun. Oh, so yeah. Oh, short roar. Yeah, okay. It's okay. Everything's fine. No panicking. Okay, we just heal back up. Oh, okay, that's the Windora. Is there no? Nice blast. Yeah, what's really nice is, is that out of that AI, uh, I can always bait the my position behind him to get that, that flash positioning. It's very, very comfy. So now that Kashala's limping, uh, provided he has enough flash pods, Bayo can just flash lock it here. So this fight's effectively over. Oh, he didn't fly.
Uh, hey. Paratoad, do anything. <laughs> Let's go. Beautiful. Let's go. <laughs> it actually worked. <laughs> I didn't think it would. <laughs> when in doubt, just kick the toad. <laughs> Can I jump down that way? Dang, I can't. Shout I can't believe that actually worked. Yeah, yellow boy coming in clutch. <laughs> All right. Teostra's next. Oh, oh. boy, Teostra. <laughs> Um, Teostra is one of my favorite fights in the entire game. Teostra, when he's in his lair, is my one of my least favorite fights in the entire game. <laughs> uh, the lair has a really cool mechanic that if uh, Teostra attacks the ground, the ground will explode. Um, a nice little lava geyser will launch us up in the air, do like a fifth of our health, if we're lucky, set us on fire, and uh, put us out of position of whatever we were doing. Guy lava geysers always happen when I'm like trying to clagger or I get a head knocked down or something like that. Uh, you know, opportunities that I can that I can take advantage of. They're fantastic. They're great. They're amazing. Um, we're gonna try to. Uh, well, you know. Oh my gosh! All of this. All of these decorations, man. Decorations are are kind of slow because they make extra menu inputs. Um, it's all always RNG if we get them or not. So getting them is kind of sad. The only time you don't want them. Yeah, well, we can't even equip them. We can equip one, and um, the, at this point, too, in the game, we can get an attack boost. It's just too slow to go and get it. And so it's like, it's we don't even want these things. So Teo oh. does have a bit of RNG. Yeah. Uh, he has two auras he can be in, fire or blast. Uh, we don't like fire aura, because it just does constant damage if you're existing near him. It's really weird because fire aura has some better AI, um, but blast aura just doesn't constantly kill you. So, like, really, really, which do you want? Um, if you're using a weapon that can lock the monster down and continually topple it, you can actually uh, deplete the aura rather quickly and you know, fire aura doesn't really mean anything. Uh, but with a weapon like this, we don't have that ability regularly. Um, so we want to, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna want blast aura. If I get fire aura, we grit our teeth and deal with it, right? There's like literally nothing we can do about that. Um, it's just, just gonna change how I play and I'm gonna have to heal a lot more often than I normally would. <clears throat> All right, Teostra. I missed the dodge. <laughs> uh, I don't like your positioning. You can dodge that roar. Hello? Oh my gosh, Clutch Claw. All right, we're good. Way too soon. Oh, hey, I am in Fire Aura. Oh. Already off to a great start. Double bite into a jump. Runnies. These are all these are all great things to be doing. And look, his head's perfectly inside of a lava geyser. Yep, and it hits me all the way over there. <laughs> so we just kinda have to be patient here. I have to wait for a moment that I can actually attack him. Wait for that to end. Oh, gosh. I, there's nothing I can do about any of this. I just had to have to wait. Oh, nice. That's <laughs> area. So much fun. Man, it's. It's not playing nice right now. He is giving me the absolute worst uh, AI right now, too.
people in the chat uh, making comments about different weapons to use. And do you remember that this was an incentive? Yes, it was an incentive to use this weapon. It is absolutely not the best weapon to use here, but it is the weapon I am using. So it's all for charity. Oh. Thank you very much for your sacrifice. No. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I got ledged there. Uh, the ledge caught my my dash attack, which put me into the spinning animation, which depleted my entire stamina bar, which means I couldn't have dodged that. Well, <laughs> it, it, it's it's gonna happen. Uh, that's also one of those moments where divine blessing does absolutely nothing, and uh, the game is you know designed beautifully and perfectly. Uh, Beyblading is you know, Beyblade at your own risk, everyone. Words to live by. Well, how do you feel about some donations since we're doing a little running back here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Awesome. Some mysterious figure called Lord of the Synth sent in $25. Says, everyone, ultimate puff puff, ultimate. Of course that went towards the Dragon Quest XI ultimate puff puff incentive that we are still trying to unlock. Y'all are doing amazing. We're sitting at $526 out of the $750, creeping ever closer. And in fact, we have another one, another donation here, Anonymous, for $25 that says, gotta see that Puff Puff Ultimate. So thank you so much. Y'all are doing a fantastic job. We're getting pretty close to the end of the run here. How much longer would you say we have, uh, Jalbega? Uh, we, got, we got like three hunts left. Uh, it can be, <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how many more times I cart here. <laughs> Well, you know, just just ballpark it. I don't know, Green. How long do you think? Twenty minutes. Oh my gosh, he was trying to. Still trying to. He's trying to to Nova. I want him to stop doing that. Get this mount off here. Yeah, about about twenty minutes. Uh, All right, so twenty minutes. A little over two hundred dollars. What we're looking for. Please get those donations in. Also, we have one more donation here from Katie Sunder for $25. Says this Monster Hunter World Run has been amazing and for a great cause. How could I not donate? Donation goes to watching some cutscenes. And that was, of course, for the Chrono Trigger Watch the Anime Cutscenes Incentive. We're looking for $1,000 for that. And now we're sitting at $90. Thank you so much. Right, there's at least a head tenderize, so that'll help. Some not well known tech there. You can clutch claw onto the monster while you're falling down from a mount. Got to reposition here a little bit. Man, he really hasn't given me any good AI yet. Oh, nope. that ground's about to explode. Let's just go this way. He's just standing inside of a lava geyser. Like. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right, we're good. There we go. First head knockdown. Good head topple. Freed. Very nice. Oh, bad AI here. That's unfortunate. So he's now locked in a uh, in a transition animation. So he's gonna keep trying to fly out of here. I can take advantage of this by continually flashing. Uh, that's my last flash that I have. So we're gonna have to follow him into the next area unless I can get some good head knockdowns or something here. Yeah, okay. I didn't think I was gonna be able to keep them, um, but. At 
we will make it up here. Hey, at least we don't have to deal with geysers anymore. Yeah, now we just have like, you know, six different ledges to deal with instead. <laughs> All of these areas in the elders recess. Amazing design, by the way. Hey, look, a ledge, suddenly. It's just a really fun game to play. Oh, it really is. Speedrunning, not so much. Playing, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I kid. I really enjoy speedrunning this game. I wouldn't if I didn't. On fire. Good head knocked down. Looking for that horn break, that's 30%. Nice. Alright, now we have to heal. Please. <laughs> <laughs> myself some crystal burst here and we're gonna save it for the next area i'm actually gonna let him go to sleep this is kind of slow um but letting him go to sleep here means i can set up a um a bomb wake up which i just kind of have to do right uh with this weapon we don't have a really good wake up attack um nothing that does a big big hit of damage that we can get a nice juicy double off of um but instead we're gonna put down two bombs and set a small barrel bomb away from them Oh, so sleepy. <laughs> Put that right there. Man, that's a great position to be in. There we go. Much better. Mm -hmm. Uh, stay in. There we go. Oh, cool. Everything is exploding mm -hmm. in lava. Gonna not greed that and try to play safe. Teos are doing Teos are things and existing out of bounds. All right, nice. nice. Very nice. Just had to play really safe there. Um, we're running really low on a lot of supplies, which I'll restock after this. He's still on fire. I <laughs> did. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your face. Yeah, well, your face. Well, your face is on fire. <laughs> we'll just we'll just wear this for the rest of it. <laughs> they always try to let this mark on us, honestly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the uh, blast mechanics are really cool because even the, you know, those, you know, you deal blast to other, um, you know, other dragons and stuff, not dependent on their defense. And the same thing kind of happens to you, too. Blast is just not a fun mechanic to be dealing with ever. Hey, Javeo, can you say, this is fine? <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this is absolutely fine. Nothing wrong here. Yeah, and the next the next hunt isn't any better, right? Yeah, next hunt is Valhazak, which has a really cool mechanic called Effluvia. Um, essentially, the air the air around him is very stinky, and we don't like that. Um, and at literally any moment, there is no rhyme or reason, and no really way to tell that it's happening to you, other than an audio cue that is very hard to miss, uh, very very easy to miss. Um, that was a really cool kill screen. Uh, <laughs> Um, but the, the mechanic will suddenly just have your health. Just have it. You, you, you no longer have half of your health. And, yeah. um, effluvia <laughs> is really cool because it can happen the moment you get hit or the moment before you get hit. And then you lose half of your health and then you get hit and then you die instantaneously. Um, so a lot of this next part is kind of, uh, has a bit of an RNG factor to it. And um, we're going to be paying very close attention to what's happening to make sure that it doesn't kill us instantly. Um, there are certain attacks that we can take uh, advantage of, and there are some attacks that we will just have to avoid entirely. Uh, luckily, with Dual Blades, this is an amazing matchup. This is this is actually a great matchup. Dual Blades loves this fight. 
Um, and this fight is one of the least optimized Elder Dragon fights because there is no script. So it's all about um, it's all about just ad lib, right? Which for dual blades, for our intents and purposes, has been the you know the entire run uh but specifically with this fight i am incredibly comfortable with my positioning on it that i can um hopefully i'll be able to agree to a lot of things and you know not eat my words here <laughs> i'm really excited to see you do this fight with dual plays wait that you was... can do that <laughs> <laughs> slicker bursting vines man i didn't find that out until earlier this year <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try to position ourselves in a way that we can uh, get a wall bang. Uh, we're trying to bait out, literally that. That's perfect. Hello, why, do we, why are we back here? Uh, but that'll work. And we are going to tenderize manually. We're gonna get two wall bangs off of this. No. <laughs> So now we're going to hold on to these pierce pods. We're going to be using them to uh, make flinches for ourselves. And I'm praying for uh, a paralysis here. Wow, two paralysis in a row. Let's go. Your prayers have been answered. <laughs> What a perfectly wow. timed. That is a perfectly timed uh, leg break right there. So he was in an animation where the leg break wouldn't normally be able to happen. You seem to be very careful here. Um, the animation ended the moment I got the leg break, which is amazing. That never happens. Well, if you have your bingo cards, you have your bingo cards. Well, it's not never happened before, but it is that never happened. <laughs> Uh, this is very good AI. There we go. We got the flinch the last second. I need to move from where I'm standing. Um, you can bait a very bad tail attack from him by standing behind him like that. The entire back of him just turns into a hitbox, and it's more or less unavoidable. Wee! Oh, so much, so satisfying. It's, it's incredibly so satisfying. satisfying. <laughs> I'm getting not great AI right now. I'm just gonna try to bait him back up here. He does a uh, kind of like a waterfall of a fluvia attack that is not great if it's on a ledge. You can't capitalize on it. Oh gosh, the scary attack. We're good. Nice head topple. Yes. I had to let the uh, slide animation end there because I did not want to be sliding on him right now when he's laying down his. You know, when we want to be taking advantage of the fight the most. First pod. Uh, uh. Oh, way too soon. The uh, Slinger Burst dodge has iframes on it. I just need to move back here. All right, good. In. Kind of reposition ourselves a little bit so we don't die. Two, three. gonna make space here I 
very interesting. I wonder if it's still going to de-aggro. Yeah, I still get a de-aggro. Okay, cool. Um, so de-aggro is really good, actually, uh, for where we're at. Uh, we have three pods, and it's transitioning here. Where it's going to move to is right underneath this rock to drop. So I'm going to shoot it the moment it gets here because it's going to attract its attention and stop it from transitioning back into the other zone. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. 609, that's on pace with uh, SNS, which is the fastest weapon for Elder Dragons right now. That is great. I'll tell you what, we got <laughs> yep. a very nice donation. I would really like to uh, mention. Yes, please read it. All right, well, Code and Data sent in $250. Says, are you ready? All right, then close your eyes and we'll get started. Ultimate Puff Puff. Hey! Even with that, we have oh. in fact met that incentive, sitting at seven hundred seventy-six dollars out of the seven hundred fifty dollars we were looking for. We have unlocked the ultimate puff puff for Ooh. Dragon Quest Eleven, which is the run coming up immediately after this one. Thank you so much for your generosity. That's. All right, I guess I have to stay up and watch that. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to see the puff. You got to see the puff puff. Now, a little reminder, we do have two other incentives for that run. We did not have, we were not able to get donations for a little while there. We had some problems with PayPal, so we're a little bit behind on unlocking our incentives. So Dragon Quest Eleven, there's also a say no to Jade incentive. We don't have any donations towards that. We need $500 to unlock it. And the Dragon Quest Eleven Slay the Sewer Black Dragon which we just need to keep up this uh, monster hunting trend, I think, directly into the next game. We are looking for $500 for that, and we are sitting at 177 So do remember, when you are getting your donations in for NAMI, to click on those incentives and bid wars. All right. This is the final hunt. Did you guys miss Dump Truck? Because he's coming with us. <laughs> really? Yep, he's got to come with us now. So we uh, we go out of our way uh, to have him with us on this hunt because he has a poison weapon. Um, for some reason, Xenojiva is incredibly susceptible to poison, and the poison damage does a lot of his health. Um, like six, is it like six thousand damage or something like that? It's insane. Or six hundred damage? It's five percent. It? It's five percent. Over five percent. Per poison. Yes. Um, and that'll proc anywhere between two to three times. Um, the threshold for poison also doesn't increase against Xeno, so it's it's a very good uh, status to be bringing against him. Now, we do take one detriment from doing that, and that's uh, Xeno's AI will target the cat. Um, we're not... One, two, three. <laughs> we're not uh, entirely happy about that. Um, but we can more or less, you know, get over it because it's going to do 5% of its health, you know, just all the time. Um, so this is probably one of the, the best instances of baiting that we can show in the, in this speed run. Um, for any of you that might be familiar with like, uh, IL speed running and Fatalis speed running. Um, one of the things that they do in there is called cone baiting. Yeah. And here, this is runny's baiting. I am positioning myself a certain, uh, distance away, um, facing a certain way you know, running away from the monster, facing away from the monster to bait that running attack. Um, I'm trying to get him underneath these rocks because they do 5% of his health. Um, so we're just trying to make sure that we are literally perfect running these RNG. What's happening? Okay. Oh. Literally perfect. Let's go. Oh. So there's a small optimization that I did there. Being in the air, uh, when Xeno uh, roars, knocks me out of the air faster than the uh, than being like tremored by the. Uh, uh, I'm gonna get hit by that. Yeah. Uh, then then uh, then getting like stunned by the uh, the roar itself. It's a small optimization. 
um, that, you know, just lets us get back into damage more. Um, so you're going to notice, too, is that we're only going to be hitting one leg. Um, there is a very interesting mechanic here. Um, Safi has a topple on this leg uh, that can be just chained one after another. So we're going to take advantage of that. Oh my goodness. Huh, that's a clean phase Very one nice for phase any one. other weapon other than SNS. <laughs> you'll yeah. hear you'll hear Green and I, we compare a lot of things to SNS because that's that is the the weapon right now. Um and that's actually like <clears throat> that's actually like super clean uh for any weapon that isn't SNS. Alright, good spawn RNG. He could just be anywhere here, but this is where he's supposed to land. Huh. Huh. <laughs> huh. I don't like this. Well, we're hand blocking, you know, with dual blades. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> Can't stop and absolutely will not stop. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> this one's gonna be a little late, but we can get it still. Gotta make sure I get my stamina back. Don't make me learn another weapon. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah! Dual blades are beautiful. <laughs> it's probably good AI right now. So Zeno does this really cool thing too, where he lights the ground on fire. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing is paying attention to my health too, because I mean, he's just kind of mean with it. Oh, he moved in the worst possible way. Should be really close to a topple. Oh god, please move. Okay. I'm actually going to take this moment to sharpen. So we just hit green sharpness, and um, your damage is based on the amount of sharpness you have. Is this the first time we talked about sharpness? <laughs> oh, yeah. It doesn't really go below your highest level outside of this fight. We stop doing this. This isn't ideal RNG. Oh, interesting. Oh. Uh, time might be coming up. It's kind of hard to tell with this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Time might be coming up. <laughs> we said we would warn you, and I almost Good forgot. Good chest topple. Oh. Should I try to do it? Should I try to do it? I don't know what you're talking about, and now I'm scared. Oh, yes, do it. All right, I'm going to try to do it. What's what's time look like right now? Um, 3.15.09. Oh, okay, we're just over. Just a little bit over. I wanted to show off something cool, but I don't know if I'm going to have the opportunity to. Maybe I can right here. Oh, I can't get you up can't this one thing. Go for the flag. I really kind of want to. 
Do the test, please. It's uh, not working. Uh oh, runnies. Can I do it off of that crystal? Oh, I can. I don't want to waste too much time trying to chase down him next to a ledge. Especially when we're getting this RNG! Oh, I'm dead. I'm alive. Who needs help? You don't need help. No health, Novers. Alright. Uh. I don't see a single pod anywhere. Oh, there's a billion over here. Please leave me alone. Attack the cat. Piercing pod, let's go. There it is, there time. GG. <sighs> yeah. All right. So if we didn't cart, we would have been on uh, we would have been on pace because uh, carting in T uh, Teostra takes about a minute ten. Uh, but cool, that's the run. That's actually a, like a really decent um, DB run too, especially considering I haven't done DBs in oh, a minute. <laughs> but thank you guys so very much for having me. That's Z uh, Zeno Percent Monster Hunter World uh, with Defender Gear. Um, there are other uh, categories for this game and for uh, with with different you know gear allowed uh, and of course every weapon is its own category and introduces new strategies um and i absolutely love this game so thank you so very much for uh for allowing me to showcase it here that was just such a wild ride from start to finish i i really really enjoyed it i hope all of our our viewers enjoyed it too because that was just fantastic yep and absolutely uh a fan a, a fun it's just a fun run Especially if you just like playing this game. Well, do you have any uh, shout outs you would like to do? Um, you know what? Shout outs to uh, to my amazing community for a lot of them were, were hanging out here uh, in chat. And I really do appreciate that. Um, really big shout outs to, to Greenspeed uh, doing commentary. Um, he has been pushing me to to continue speedrunning this game and get even better and better times because it keeps beating me. <laughs> but competition is the uh, is the best source of improvement. Um, and uh, also shout outs to the uh, the Monster Hunter speedrunning community. Um, we are on SRC. If you guys want to join that, we do have a community discord and uh, we are working on making more uh, resources to introduce people to speedrunning this game. Um, so if you have any questions about speedrunning this game, RTA or um, individual level runs, you know, that's a great place to, to ask and hang out. Um, thank you guys very much again for for having me. Um, and uh, yeah, let's 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 keep pushing, uh, raising funds for Nami. Speaking of which, before we bounce out, I have another donation here from Code and Data for five hundred dollars. It says, "What the heck? Let's say no to Jade too." Also, big shout out to Nami, really important organization that has helped my family immensely. Show your support, folks, and we have hit that incentive. The Dragon Quest Eleven say no to Jade. We will be saying no to Jade. Oh my gosh! Thank you so so much. And y'all don't go anywhere. That run is coming right up. Yes, it is Dragon Quest XI Definitive Edition True Ending. <laughs> Real talk about the Pompadour. Yes, amazing. <laughs>